Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Middle Age Mutant Show. This is episode five, by the way. My name is Ty, and let me go ahead and introduce my cohorts. Um, first, a man that I'm going to start calling goodreads.com slash comics. No H. What the hell, man? You got me reading Jeff Johns. You got me uh, picking up. I'm looking at JSA omnibuses and stuff. I would have never guessed. No H. How are you doing today, man? Doing very well. You know, uh, reading Justice Society of America makes me think about the justice system in America and its layered complications. I really think we should spend some time to go into. <laughs> never ends. It never ends with you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, my next co-host is a man, the only man that I would ever read Mark Wade for. But <laughs> how are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm I'm sorry that I I threw that out there. I, I had no no idea you had so much disdain for that person. Um, but it, it's, but you're it's enjoying it, tell. so you know. It's hard to tell what I'm going to hate, it, it, who I hate. It is hard. To, it is hard to tell. Like, I uh, I know, you know, we've played games together before and like you're playing with my son and my son's like, man, he hates about everybody. I was like, yeah, that's that's Ty. He, he, <laughs> hates, he hates more people than he likes. So, yeah. So if, if I do like, like you, that's extra special. <laughs> that you know? is extra special. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for me to like people. I'm like, oh, I don't like this guy. I don't like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So before we get started, uh, it's time to look at uh, this is a new feature of the channel. It may or may not hit. Uh, let's take a quick look at the meme of the week. I thought this was quite apropos for what we're going to be talking about today. The uh, <laughs> Orville uh, is going to be on the slate today. So I thought we'd get a little bit of Trek trek meme in there um another thing i want to talk about that's trek related uh is lucille ball lucille ball wow. we owe a lot this as a mutant community we owe a lot to mrs uh really mrs. ball yeah <laughs> if it hadn't been for mrs ball we wouldn't have star trek apparently gene roddenberry was really good friends with this this beautiful lady and she was one of the people who fought to get funding for Star Trek. Wow. Uh, she didn't quite understand it <laughs> from what I read. <laughs> she didn't quite understand it. Well, she actually thought it had to do something with the uh, USO. And so it might have been that she she fought for it because she thought she was fighting for the troops kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I just thought that was a really cool picture. She also well, fought, we'll, uh, we'll take for fun <laughs> she also fought for funding for uh, uh, Twilight Zone. That so makes sense. We have yeah. Mrs. Lucille Ball to thank for T Star Trek and Twilight Zone. Miss Ball, yeah. I salute you. Thank you so much yeah. for helping yeah. out the nerd community. You know, that's a really interesting thing because I've read conflicting things about it where I think ultimately there was some, I'm not exactly sure, but there was some misunderstanding. Because a lot of people are like, oh, she just loves Star Trek. I'm like, I don't no, no. think she knew. No. And I read something, somebody, some fan online said like, she thought Star Trek was sort of like finding the next star in Hollywood or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had heard it had something. She thought it had something to do with the USO. So she was really passionate about it. And but, so, um, so inadvertently, thank you for inadvertently saving Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's just go over a quick, like agenda, agenda this week. We're going to be talking about uh, Willow and what happened to that show. We're going to be talking about Shazam 2, Superman, uh, the, the new DCU Superman, uh, Marvel's Blade, the uh, MCU Marvel's Blade. Uh, we're going to be talking about Hollywood execs' shitty opinion of the public. We're going to be talking about Bruce Campbell and his temper. All right. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> talking about uh, a new player in the digital comics market. Who is it? Oh, we'll talk about that here soon. We're going to be talking about... My anger with Marvel on one of their new omnibuses. We're going to be talking about uh, Tim Drake and his uh, short-lived comic run. Uh, we'll be talking today and back issues about Batman, the three Jokers. It's going to be a good discussion. And to cap it all off, piece de resistance, Orville. We're going to be talking about it today, the first three episodes. I'm so excited about that show. I've been chomping at the bit to talk about it. So... Without further ado, 
let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to start talking uh, about the live stream announcements this Friday, Thursday, the 23rd at 7 p.m. The new mutant, Luis, will be joining me in Sniper Elite 5. Uh, I'm hoping that Bods picks this game up <laughs> soon so that he can <laughs> uh, join me as well. But for now, Luis is going to help us out and, and step in, and we're going to actually have some co-op fun. And maybe if Bod sees the stream, he'll go, okay, I have to go buy that game, make it a priority. I'd be so jealous. Or perhaps we can make enough money during the stream <laughs> that we can buy Bods a copy. It shouldn't be too hey, and a PS5. Uh, you are, uh, man, you're reaching too far. Too far. I'm just <laughs> that impressed with you guys, and I have that much faith in you that yeah, uh-huh. you can do yeah. it. You can do it, guys. Uh, and then <laughs> later on in that weekend, 24th to the 26th, sometime during that time, I'm going to put out a, uh, a notice on on the YouTube. I will be playing Diablo 4 because it's an open beta. Yay! It's probably going to be really crappy and have a lot of disconnects like it did in Diablo 3, but I'm going to try to do it. Do you think it's going to be like 20 minutes of gameplay? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> more yeah. Demo? Yes. If, <laughs> if, P, if subscribers did not visit our short lived resident evil chainsaw demo, then you, you, you missed out anyways. Cause it was only about 20 minutes long. It was so fast. I could not yep. believe it. it was just me running around in a circle in the courtyard of the, the village. And, uh, they were chasing me and then all of a sudden it was over it was done. Uh, literally, I think it was 29 minutes in, in the end. Yeah. So the rest of the stream, I had already thought this was going to happen. It could happen. Um, I went ahead and had one right left in the, had one left in the chamber. I played Resident Evil 2 for the remainder of the stream. The stream ended up being about four hours long. So if you want to watch me play video games badly for actually, I don't think I do that badly. So if you want to play me, uh, sorry, see me play video games middlingly, go watch that stream. <laughs> you'll You'll be excited to see it. Okay, so first up on the docket, hold on, let me, let me, so Will is canceled. Or and, is it? Uh, is it, yeah, I'm going to mark it as canceled, but I, as Bot said, the showrunner hangs on, uh, hangs on to hope here. So <laughs> uh, apparently, what I, from what I read, he says the second season is mapped out and uh, that it, it's, it, what they're doing is since Disney's doing all the restructuring of their streaming or they're, they're actually, I guess, reevaluating the, the profitability of their streaming revenue. Uh, it has been put, he, as he put it, it's been put on a, like, like, like a 12 month hiatus for like at yeah. least 12 months. They won't be making another uh, Willow show. So he says, is that yeah. canceled? And I thought that man, that's probably a lot of cope right there because I know that critically, uh, on IMDb, it, it or not IMDb on Rotten Tomatoes, it wasn't bad. It was like I think it was like eighty six or seventy three and like eighty six. So I think, as far as I remember, the um, audience liked it a bit more than the um, the, the yeah, critics I, liked it. I, I actually watched it all, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna. I was on the boat where we're like, I'm not liking this, and then I did like it, and I kind of would want to keep watching it, but you know, um, my daughter liked it a lot. Um, yeah. It, I mean, it has a lot of stuff I would rather not have in there uh, and stuff I wish were in there, but they just can't be like, you know, Val Kilmer is how, he's how he is now. You know, he's 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 not doing well. So, mm-hmm. man, if he was in there, I'd have been like 100 percent more. Well, all about it, but but it, you know, do, but do you get behind it 100 percent, even if even if Mad Mardigan's in it, because to me, it seems like it was just. A, uh, a vehicle for somebody's really crappy politics uh, and their uh, identity politics, because what the, the two, two main protagonists were like lesbian. Right. Right. And they killed every white guy on the show for like re- reasons. They like, I, I, apparent, I saw the, uh, I don't watch this show. I hate watch the um, uh, synopses of these shows because I just can't be, I can't be bothered. If it's, if it's even like the remote chance that it's going to be terrible, I won't watch it. I'll have somebody that like, there's this guy on YouTube named Reaper. He, uh, all he does is hate watch like she Hulk and, um, uh, 
Willow and stuff like that. And so I'll watch his little synopsis and he kind of has the same taste as me. And that's what, that's kind of what I do is I usually pick somebody who has my same taste. And then I go, okay, what does this guy think? I trust him. And uh, he was like, God, this show, F this show. It's so terrible. And all the, uh, all the cry baby nonsense and, and, and just like, Oh, we have to hate white men. And he'll here, look at these girls are les- in lesbians. And look, this is, uh, here's a minority that's weirdly wasn't in the first movie, which is fine. You can <laughs> race race swap at this time. Who cares uh, anymore? But it just seems to me that they 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 did their best to also shit on Willow himself. Like he's supposed well, to be kinda, like this amazing sorcerer, do. but they all kind of like yeah. shut up, Willow. We you, you don't know nothing. And I just think, well, why is why are you it's doing kind that? Of, it's kind of like this is what they do now. They 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 have a character who obviously is by the end of the movie or, you know, series or whatever, you know, he gets to full power and you're like, you are a great sorcerer. And then like, they come back years later and they're crap. The same thing with like Obi-Wan, you know, is like, Oh, you don't, you're not good with the force anymore. You're not, you're not a good Jedi. And then they've got to like build back up in it. You know, it was, it's kind of that, that formula in there. Yeah. But Obi-Wan wasn't a bad, he wasn't a bad Jedi. He just wasn't doing, he wasn't in the game anymore. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, you can say I, the same thing for Willow. What I don't like about this is, is, from what I saw, was they did the same thing they did in Star Wars: The Force Awakens. They had yeah. the main uh, characters, first of all, like Han and Leia, for example. Yeah, uh, they have to destroy that in order to have a plot, and, and I'm like, why? That you just like you crapped on everything that. I loved as a kid, I was like, oh, Han and Leia are going to be together forever and it's going to be great for it. And then all of a sudden they're like, nope, nope. It, it, the ship hit the rocks after they had their first kid and yeah. they kind of yeah. hate each other. They look haggard now. And, you know, you know um, they just, when, I don't, go ahead. Well, when they decided to finally make the sequel trilogy, which it ended up being what it was, you know, bad. And uh, uh, first of all, I understand uh wanting to push the new characters that makes sense i get it but can we get the main cast on screen together one frame of the movie yeah like kind of call it fan service whatever but it's kind of just what we want to see but also another thing i considered when i was first watching these movies i'm like okay so they got rid of all the canon and lore up until this point they Mm -hmm. the uh, disney purge happened fine whatever Mm -hmm. we're it is what it is at, at this point but so they're choosing to story, tell the story now because it's we're around the relatively speaking the same ages as the actors in real life. They kind of want to make feed that same amount of time has passed for these characters as it roughly speaking has for us in real life. Okay, fine. So if they do that, then that means going back to your point of having to split up on and so or on on and so on and Leia or quote unquote having to is they have to have some type of conflict happening now because they're choosing the story to tell the story now so i they feel the need to do something like this when it's really like we're okay if our favorite characters are just chilling and vibing and kind of having a good time i don't think we need like these people to have a conflict like mm-hmm. i'm at the point now where my favorite characters have already kind of been there done that I would watch them just go about their day because I just enjoy these characters. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't need them to like go <laughs> see divorce. I'm like, you know, it's been like 30 years, 40 years. Just have them chill. We're good. Yeah. You know? yeah. Can, can't they just be like retired? Uh, is that is that too much <laughs> for them? And I understand with, with with at least with Star Star Wars, I understand because you're trying to take the focus off of the old characters and put them on the new because you're going to be making toys. You're going to be, yeah. you know, these characters are going to be carrying on the mantle perhaps for not just this trilogy, but for another trilogy. And, but for Willow and the name, it's not star. It's not like called what, where, where do they come from? What's the land? I don't even remember. Anyways, it's not named after the land they come from. It's named after Willow, the main yeah. character. So it, it, you, I would think that he would kind of, at this point, kind of be their little Yoda slash, Obi Wan, yeah. where they're like, "Man, you're awesome," but in that, in that uh, little bit of uh, story that I saw, it seemed like they were just like, "Oh, Willow, you don't know anything. Shut up, Willow." And yeah, and 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 why would you shit on your character like that? I just don't understand. Other than 
he's oh, he's the old guard. We're the new guard, kids. Look at my purple hair. I have a tattoo. This guy, uh, this guy is multiracial, and I'm like, that's. I guess that's fine, but to me, it just seems like you shit on the old to to bring up the new. And where's the respect? I don't. Well, know. here's here here's the thing with 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 Willow is that he. He points out in the show that he never was a great sorcerer, and at the very end, he—if you really think about it—in the movie, all he did was trick. Uh, was about ba- Balmorda with the ba- Bathmorda, the- Bathmorda, Bath Like he, all he did was trick her. He did like a little magician trick, so he never really became uh, yeah, a great. But he sorcerer. also went. He also went back to his village, to his because it's not like it's not like in like uh, what is it uh, the movie. Um, where he had uh, uh, Dragon Slayer, where mm-hmm. his mentor dies at the beginning of the movie. It's not like that. This he he lived, and then he went back to his village. You're telling me that when he went back to his village, he didn't go back to that sorcerer and go, "Okay, now it's time for the rest of my training." And he didn't do that. Well, uh, because he didn't become know. the wizard know, of his village. Say. That's kind of what I he does. like. When I first saw it, I was like, "Well, that's what's going to happen." He goes back now, and he's going to become a powerful wizard like this other guy. And I was like, "Well, that's awesome. That that's that's a cool, happy story." And so, when you come back to this subject, you're like, "Oh, Willow, man!" Because th- isn't that the kind of the point of Willow? In this like he's the only one that can get them across that frozen sea or whatever it is. Uh, or whatever, get to them to this other land. He's like the only guy, and it turns out that it's not really the case. Well, he's the only one that they think can train Alora Dannon, but like he feels like he's been living a lie because he 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 got super famous for that. You know, like you know, yeah, you you, you stopped her, uh, and, but like he's like, I did like a magician's trick. He's like, I didn't do anything, but. He, as the show progresses, he does do things like, you know, great things in there. It takes a lot out of him, but like, um, he has no, he's nowhere near as powerful as a Lord Dan. Then why the hell would they t- ask him to train the Lord Dan? That doesn't make any sense. He's either. the only, he's the only one who can like, there's then nobody why, else. Well, then why didn't he continue to train? Cause, uh, he to tra- knew to that train her? He, no, no. Why didn't he continue to train? If he knew that someday he he's okay. So they they have a wizard in it in the in the village of off good or whatever it's called. They yeah. have a uh, they have a village uh, that has a wizard, and that is a spot that you had to like you had to like be chosen for. Okay, yeah. I'm not guessing that was just for like that day in the show. They're like, okay, we picked you, Willow, and that's it. No, the he 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 becomes <laughs> the apprentice, right? Yeah, that, that was the whole point was to pick an apprentice. And then he said later, the, 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 the wizard is like, what, uh, what were you going to pick? And he says, Oh, I was not going to pick anything or something. He had like, a, he's like, that was the right answer. And so yeah. that, that to me was like, he's like, yeah, you screwed up. I'm giving you a second chance to prove your worth. Go help this child that you found and then come back. And then we're going to train you to be the, see, you see where I'm going? Like, yeah. it seems like they had to shit on the original story for no reason. I, I would have said, if it was me, I would have said, Willow's amazing. He's coming back to help us now. And then he's training Laura Dannon and not make Laura Dannon a whore in this one, apparently. Holy crap. Whenever it, they're like, yeah, she's just having sex with this guy. And, well, that's, uh, and she's that's also blonde. Son. And she's also blonde for some reason. Because they're hiding her. She's, she's being hidden? Okay. Yeah. Because they say she inexplicably becomes redhead like towards the end of this end of the yeah, show. Yeah, like, like they weren't like once oh her- god, we washed the peroxide out of her hair and look the they <laughs> the, the came back. They never said that. Somebody was was saying like it just turns red. Was, well, yeah, like is. her she starts using her powers and it starts turning it red. Starts like out. she starts turning back. But the the one she's having the, she's I don't know if she she's having sex with, but she's because it's kind of more itty still. It, it's uh it's it's Eric who's named after you know remember Matt Mardigan's friend it's Matt Mardigan's son mm-hmm. who Eric, is Eric like the whatever yeah I remember him who was a character I actually liked in the show and then like he's like you know the character that gets kidnapped and they have to all go save so he's barely in it mm-hmm. but uh, she she you know is in love with him and she's being hidden as like a mm-hmm. uh, like a little little baker girl like she's you know with the staff and mm-hmm. stuff and um, you know she he falls in love with her and like she's in love with him so she's gonna go 
with them no matter what to go save her true love like she's like you know star so it's, this is and, just know. like like it's just turning uh, turning the story on its head basically is what will is about oh it's the girl that's rescuing the boy this time and then yeah kind <laughs> of kind okay, of okay well can't, that's fine can't disagree I, with that I, I guess whatever yeah anyways i want more in this show i i would have rather seen a show where willow was respected so uh we good luck i guess <laughs> Well, I heard if they have a season two, there'd be some Mad Mardigan because they le- they leave all that open. So I'm kind of but mad. But do you want to see Mad Mardigan again at this point? Yes. He's gonna be some like he's gonna. You know what they're gonna do to him? They're gonna freaking Luke Skywalker him. He's gonna be like some <laughs> pussy that they're. He's like I don't want to fight anymore, and they're like, what? That was Mad Mardigan's whole deal. That's they, no, he. They're, that's exactly what they're they, gonna do to him. They're gonna. They, go, they oh, mentioned he, him, and he he went into like some weird portal thing. It's like they were opening another storyline up and like, I'm well, never going to see it now. And his I daughter thought- knows wants to go, go rescue him from there. And thought- Christian Slater, Christian Slater is one of his friends. And, yeah. I uh, saw that they, part. Yeah. They, they brought him up. He was cool in there. I thought he's um, going to look Skywalker. So they're going to do some really dodgy CGI young Val Kilmer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. They're going to um, have to well, deep think- fake it. Cause his voice, man, it is, it's real bad these days. He, well, his, his, Son does his voice now. Oh, oh really? Oh, that's good. Yeah, son. Do, that's what. And, and anything now, his son does his voice. And does it sound like, like? Does it sound like Val Kilmer? Yeah, he does it. He does really good. Um, and what was it that I was watching that he did do the voice for? Oh, I'll it was be- this. It was this. He did. Uh, you don't see him, but he. Yeah, because he, he's like the, in a pit. the portals. He's like in a portal or something. And he he's yeah. telling his daughter, and it sounded like him. I was like, oh yeah, that's that, his son did a good job. And so, then like you don't oh, go see ahead. him. He's like you don't see Val Kilmer on screen. You don't see him. You see Val Kilmer, but he can't talk. So he's doing like his. He's really uh, acting out and uh, pantomiming. I like to think he would just o- overact and he would just do like his <laughs> eaten by a shark bit. He'd basically be like be Ross from Friends. And that one just- <laughs> and it- no, it, it was opposite of that. You you don't <laughs> see him, but you hear him. So. That's what yeah. I was to say. From what I saw, he weren't they sitting in like this? Like there was like a giant pit or something, and Christian Slater was there. And oh, Christian, yeah, that, that was when they were the trolls. They were captured by the trolls. Oh, and why can the, the trolls, trolls talk all of a sudden? Why can the trolls? I don't. Talk know, apparently, they always could. I don't know. I don't know. That was kind no, of no, weird. Yeah, that's that's just them retconning stuff. They're all oh no, they they were just that you know somebody was p- pissed off because they're all, you know the trolls are a protected minority and we shouldn't have been just so <laughs> mean to them and then turned them into big dragons and I'm no, like what the hell they they, they uh the Stick trolls to your by the way people they scared, they, they, scared, they scared the crap out of me I don't think they needed to change that but like they 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 still kill the hell out of trolls in, in this one so well, i figured they would. um yeah i don't know i yeah like i said not really didn't really care about this show because once i saw a little bit of it i was like mm, uh, no 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 i know that where this is going i have seen star wars i know and it's funny because lucasfilm i it should i should have known lucasfilm would do <laughs> this kind of stuff and i know there's going to be people that protect this kind of stuff and love it go for it you're good whatever yeah you wanna, whatever i, I you wouldn't say do. i love it I wouldn't say I love it, but I don't hate it as much because I actually watched it and I was like, well, well, I there think are things of- in there like I'm not I'm not happy with, but like uh-huh. overall, I, I enjoyed it. Like there was funny parts and uh, that the Borman character, the guy, the really the really yeah, big the guy, guy that was yeah he he was awesome in there. He's uh he's Matt Mardigan's squire, and mm-hmm. now he's grown up and um and stuff. And the the prince guy was uh can't ever remember his name but you know he was flash thompson in um yeah and and you know spider-man movies he's he's pretty funny in there i mean that, mm-hmm. that guy's just you know funny in everything it's got it's got ups and downs so i, I wouldn't say i loved it but like i would like a season two i, I would i would watch it but i'm hey, not full you- of hate like ty so I'm, that's what that's oh. why we have the dichotomy here um, ty will straight I'm- up say what he thinks no h is the fence setter you're the you're the hey everybody let's be nice let's be nice and i am the hate hateful one yeah, yeah, that's how that's how the show works. I, I I try not to reveal my inner black-hearted. Uh, <laughs> Ty is not afraid of it. <laughs> I can't help it; it just spills out of me. I'm like, oh, 
F this yeah. and F that. I just can't help it. I've gotten so yeah. sick of like yeah. pretending I like something just because I used to like something that now I just like, I can't do it. I can't. It's, it's tra- driving me crazy. I'm going to have a heart attack. So if yeah. I let it out, like <laughs> let the steam valve go every once in a while, I feel like, oh, that's just another year I added to my life. So yeah. uh, probably with, with your high blood pressure. Yeah. Hey, it's it's normal now, you know. Uh, it's normal you, blood pressure. Uh, I'm I'm the weird nerd here who I I don't think I've ever seen the first Willow all the way through, and it's been a long oh. time. So I'm like eh, I'm I'm the weird outlier nerd who I don't think I've ever seen the Princess Bride all the way through. What I don't, I don't dislike Indeed, man. I don't, it's like I never I don't like Monty Python. I've seen a little bit. I'm like just the weird out ass nerd who I'm like I haven't I don't have uh the special bond with some of these properties well, that a lot of people have. I think because maybe you're more into sci-fi because I can ask you anything about Star Trek and you'll you'll know that. And yeah it's, you know. I, well then we'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. And yeah plus, I mean have you seen have you seen uh Escape from LA all the way through? I mean sorry Escape from New York New York LA uh yeah and actually it took me a long time to watch escape from new york because i eventually had to just buy it on dvd years ago and yeah, had to explain it's hard to get on vod it is hard other than to rent it no longer is for sale and it ir- irritates me yeah so it's, it's um that product of his time it's still awesome but it's if you were to show like a youngling the movie that they would probably think it looks so old <laughs> and it's so yeah. tame. But I'm like, it's, have bad taste. They it's like I, taste. I feel like I should get my kids to watch it, or at least James. But like, it's like pulling teeth now. He's a teenager, okay. and it's like it's so old. Well, smack <laughs> the shit out of him. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. That just sit oh, down, that, point Dexter. Childish. You're gonna watch this. You're gonna watch this, and you're gonna like it. That's child abuse now. Yeah, Stupid Aaron, laws. Uh, it, 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 how, what are you gonna? Why do you have children if not to abuse them? You know how many times I've yeah. got shit smacked <laughs> out of me. I got. I was beaten to a pulp as a child. And and it wasn't by just one person. Like if you're Hispanic, <laughs> Hispanics will know this. If you do something in a Hispanic family, and then somebody just hears about it, who's a relative, mm-hmm. they'll beat your ass too. I got spanked <laughs> by uncles, grandparents, my mom. Just it seemed like strangers that knew my family. I would get spanked if I did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, one well, guy who took me to his van and videotaped the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, was uh, really- I, I can. I can tell you for, for, for white people, this is how it went down for me. I, I smarted off to my dad. He was building a fence. He stopped building the fence. He built a paddle instead, put holes for wind <laughs> resistance. And then I didn't get spanked with it. I just have this, this thing of fear, this, this, this instrument, this symbol of oh fear. God. And uh, and then and I wish I had that for my kids. I, would, I don't I know what happened love, to it. Well, you haven't put the fear of God into him yet. You just you make a paddle yourself, and you scared the shit out of them with it. I gotta go make a paddle. That's a lot of work. (laughs) I'm willing to do. I'd rather (laughs) go ahead with uh, you know. I I I would I would just like to mess with their minds. You know what I mean? Like if our son, you know, if he's bad, it's from Christmas time. I would say something like like mommy and daddy want you to have a nice Christmas. Santa Claus wants you to have a nice Christmas. Why don't you (laughs) want to have a nice Christmas? I just really put the guilt into their brain. Well, I think that brings us to a, a dad bods moment. Okay, hold, on, hold on one moment. While I get that going. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Go for it. So my, uh, my daughter's not the, the, she's the, the second child. So she's the, the wild one. Like my, 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 my son's like, he'd sit there, entertain himself and just be good. And, 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 fine she she's not she gets into things all the time we told her this year for christmas like you know pretty much what you were saying no h were like you know santa claus wants you to have a good christmas um so <laughs> me and brooke like we set all the presents out that that we put out for her uh you know we changed her mind the last minute and we hit all of hers and only had james's and all of hers were hidden like under like the entertainment center and stuff and so christmas morning uh we recorded and everything. She went down there and like wondering where her presents are. We're like, well, I guess uh, Santa didn't think you're very good. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't. She she was like, and you know, what her attitude was. She was like, that's okay. I've got presents at my grandparents' house. Like, she just, <laughs> like it's it's like, uh, how can we punish you? 
I was like, I don't know. There's like nothing you can do to. You just tell them no. You don't get any of that. I'm going to call granny right now. What Mexican women do is they walk up behind you and they, they, they all have fake nails. They all have fake nails. <laughs> And they well, squeeze they, the back of your arm. You know that like fleshy part of your arm that's like super tender. They'll squeeze that with their nails, and then you'll have like all these little divots in your arm. And they're like, <laughs> "If you piss me off again," and you're like, "Okay, okay, okay, okay." You know, you start to like tear up, you, you, and then you'll never mess with them again. They're like, uh, "Don't let me take. Don't make me have to take you out to the car." Because what they'll do is they'll just have your uncle or whatever take you out to the car and beat you for a while, and then bring you back in. You're all crying and crap, and then you you, you shape up so that's the real way they get it is they they just terrorize you until you're like oh god you know like you know <laughs> um yeah that sounds like we and we need to figure out something because our boy he's he's three and he's acting up and he's pushing boundaries and uh i don't i will say though parenthood makes you like some spirit of every parent before you and like uh, possesses you to say things you would never say i don't think i sound cool or anything but like we were at a restaurant and I found myself saying to our son, sit your butt down. I'm like, that seems so tame to, to, compared to where I am now. I was like, yeah. it's all, it's all about cuss words now for us. Yeah. yeah no, like, I've heard, you know, I'm, you know, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I try, yeah. I find my, like weirdly trying to intimidate my three-year-old and of course it doesn't work right it's sort of like because he's doing this thing now where he's like hitting and i don't know where he got that from because like nothing he watches has it we don't do it and and i see he hits me i'm like you, you you're gonna hit me you want to think about that and i thought he was saying that i'm like well, am i trying to like put the squeeze on this three-year-old who like doesn't react because it's not intimidating <laughs> i can't even intimidate a three-year-old so i'm like i don't know why i'm trying to act tough i apparently white kids never get hit because uh i got every <laughs> second of the day it was getting slapped th- something thrown at me uh the remote control my mom is a dead eye with the remote <laughs> control i've never been hit <laughs> so many times in the face with a controller in my life she's dead eye with shoes she uh, man it's like she has it's like it's like magnetism whatever she throws it like careens towards my head and smacks the shit out of me it's just she, yeah i don't know how she does it but it's like it can be around a corner it's like wanted it goes around a corner and gets me i don't understand how she does it but uh yeah <laughs> I, I, I were you just get, like a smart ass little kid oh i was bad dude i was real bad yeah. I was super bad, but I lived in fear of my parents. So, or my parents, the way it should be, the way it should be, but let's move on yeah. from this topic because we're, we're running out of daylight here. Uh, next up is Shazam suffers. It's worst DCU opening performance ever. This movie mm. is not doing well. It apparently is. Let's see if I get the right. Yeah, here we go. Um, it apparently is not putting the butts in the seats and it's even got the director saying that he is now uh, looking into no longer doing uh, or for a while moving away from the superhero uh, industry for a bit uh, because yeah. of the the intense hatred for this. Well, not hatred. It's just it's apathy. It's apathy. Yeah. now. I don't know how much yeah, of it's superhero yeah. fatigue, but I'll, I, 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 here's, I'm going to hazard a guess as to why this movie isn't doing so hot. Uh, you put two old ladies as the antagonist of this yes. movie. That's number one. You put two old ladies. And he- let me uh, let me first say, when Helen Mirren was young, she was hot as a $2 pistol. She was a, a beautiful woman. But when she's in her, what, 70s or 60s or whatever she's in, I don't think that you should have put her in this movie. Not this one. And Lucy Lou, she's looking old too. So I just don't understand why they did that. And number two, this doesn't matter anymore. This yeah. is not part of the DCU uh, universe, yeah. the canon. And, it's no longer, it does not it, matter. You, if you go to we watch all this know movie, it. Yeah. it does not connect to any other part. It's going to be like retcon, whatever. Frank, first movie you could argue didn't really connect even with the super, the headless Superman at the end, like yeah. they would mention things, but I'm like, I don't think anyone ever truly bought that Shazam was really deeply connected to the 
DCEU. It's sort of like how the Deadpool movies are kind of connected, but it's sort mm-hmm. kind of sort of, like they can be, but then they have another Colossus around. So like, what? Where is this? Yeah. You know? And um, and uh, I think with the Ant Man and the Wasp having being the other recent garbage fire, it's like, well, what? People say fatigue. I'm like, yes, that is true. But it's also like these things are just kind of, they don't look appealing. Like you said, like Shazam has to fight his grandparents from both sides, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> like, yeah, so basically the, the movie is um, Shazam was acting, uh, uh, Billy Batson was, was, was acting up. He, he, he was loud in a store. So his grandparents from both sides of his, his family are going to come at him with their fake nails. <laughs> and i'm like who i mean like i i feel like a broken record i'm saying like the movies doesn't look good enough to spend the 70 dollars and arrange three weeks in advance for a, a, like a, a mm-hmm. babysitter I'm like, yeah it's well not even, worth for my time. The, even for a typical 20 year old this might not look at all worth and here's the problem there's a difference between uh, i recently uh, read a, uh, an article about this and i can't remember what it was but they were talking about how there is a there's a weird difference between people that are fans of the DCEU and people that are fans of the MCU. They said the MCU fans will pretty much watch anything you put in front of them because of the connections between right uh, the movies. Okay, but they said yeah. the DCEU fans will only watch the franchises that they're already a fan of. So Batman are gonna stick with Batman. Superman gonna stick with Superman. Nobody's gonna watch Aquaman. Yeah, no, that's not that's not true. They they pulled down pretty good, pretty good change there, um, and I think that's more Momoa than than uh, Aquaman, to be honest. Yeah, um, but not. It's, it's I, all it's all it's all John Craig's wife. Yes, her friend. <laughs> <who> is, uh, <laughs> quite he has, he, he, yeah, they, yeah. How many times has he had to watch it now? He's told us he's, he's watched it a quite a bit. Yeah, I would kill myself. I've seen it He'll one text time. Us, he's like, "Guess like, what we're watching?" Uh, yuck! <laughs> yuck! Well, from from what I've heard, like my son said that he heard the movie itself is is good, but like you know, no one's going to see it, so that's kind of irrelevant. I know? heard it was middling, and no one was going to see it. They were like, eh, "Yeah, you know? like nobody's that." I I enjoyed it. the I enjoyed the first Shazam. I did. Uh, yeah, they were one of the only DC movies I actually legit liked. And yeah. But still, come around the sequel. I haven't seen it, but it makes I, me think it, it's like big the sequel. You know, Tom yeah, Hanks should play. If they're gonna do it now, it'd be like well, Tom Hanks plays him. I know. Just, it's not thirteen going on thirty. The sequel. That's what <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we don't. Anyways, it it did terribly. It's still doing. Ter- we'll see in the second week. I mean, it, it, here's the deal: if in the second week it has the drop off that every superhero movie is having, oh god, it's gonna be bad. This won't even be like a cocaine bear. And what was the other movie that we what we saw at the same time? Ant-Man. This won't be a cocaine, uh, cocaine bear Ant-Man. This will be far worse than that. Because if you can't pull down, like, well, I, I'm going to guess they pulled down. Uh, let's see. In the first week oh, on Thursday, the gross receipts for 3.4 million. I'm going to guess they pulled around uh, about, what, 27, maybe less million in that first week. I think. Anyways. Uh, and that, that would be a worldwide number. And that's like, Oh, that is bad because if you can't put the butts in the seats that first week, especially with comic book movies, you're not gonna, you're not going to do it in the second week in in this day and age. Nobody, it seems like nobody repeat watches anything, especially a bad movie. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing that is, you know, the, and credit to the director guy here a little bit, because he, he had to clarify something that he wasn't blaming fans specifically, but I'm like, I don't know. It kind of feels like you're blaming fans, but Hey, whatever, you know, uh, that's my pet peeve across the board with all of these. You come up with a bad product. Nobody likes it. And all of a sudden we're toxic, like, or, or, or something like that. Yeah. Or there's always these excuses like fatigue. I'm like, yes, that's true, but we'll see something if it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah all tired of superhero movies but you know what we'll go see one if it's good and uh, i just think there's haven't been a truly good one in a while so i'm like 
that excuse doesn't carry the most water for me. I think it's a degree of that. It's not untrue, but it's also like, come on, guys. Like, mm. that's, that's, that, that, is, that would be my hill to die on. It's just don't, don't on the put one it on hand, us. I think, I think fans have no taste, but I'm also like, don't blame the fans. I'm really confused on this. I'm like, on the one hand, I think nerds in general typically have bad taste. Snyder fans are a big uh, ex- ex- example of this. Like, mm-hmm. how could movies and still be demanding like you get more of them like they're so tra- they were trash from the get-go but mm-hmm. there's legion of these snyder fans mm-hmm. and so i'm thinking well, at large fans are pretty much you know they have they have no no taste but at the same time if your movie's bad i think it's more of like a universal quality to your crapness mm-hmm. and i just get really irritated it makes me not want to see the movie mm-hmm. it's like it factors back into why these are underperforming. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't like this. I got to hear about how much of a jerk I am. So, you know, I'm mm-hmm. not even going to, I'll go back and rewatch some of the old things. I'll go back and rewatch, uh, uh, Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real yeah. movies. I don't know. I, I'm kind of with Ty where I, 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 just for me, it feels like it doesn't matter because like, you know, the new James Gunn universe is coming out. So I'm like, yeah. What does it matter? What does it matter? That's yeah, a big and, on, and on a uh, less uh, on a less like I guess pertinent note, uh, Razor Fist talked about how every uh, superhero's costume now looks like a what is it the 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 speed ball or the the those yeah. balls we used to yeah. hurl at each other in the gym. That is so accurate. <laughs> Man, I was so like weirdly. I was like, yes, finally. Oh, oh, yeah. with the texture. Yeah, that oh, textured God. like yeah. uh, dodgeball. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what all their suits look like these days because I you can't so have like a flat suit. It has to have some sort of texture to it. Yeah. yeah. You don't need that. I mean, but. it got, it was out of hand in 2009 and it's never stopped because going back to Star Trek, even their uniforms, like Chris Pine is wearing like his Star Trek sweater and it even has the little Starfleet symbol. Yeah. The thing I'm like, oh my God, we're nuts with this. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. It's not even really bad. It's just everyone looks the same. And he is mm-hmm. very. And I'm like, well, I guess if you want to keep it in universe, I don't know. It just I, I, now I cannot unsee it. So, yeah, makes, no, see, on, makes sense. Do, go ahead. No, no, it makes yeah. sense. Like it, it's, it's a good description. Yeah. Moving on to the next topic. Well, this one is one I'm actually happy about, folks. The upcoming Superman movie. He's retaking the mon- the motto, truth, justice, and the American. I salute you, Superman, for coming back to the, the land that made you famous. Um, Boo, what I'm, about the rest of the world? Shut up, Boz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I, I like it. Yeah, I know. I uh, I am quite happy about this. Uh, they they apparently dumped this uh, they dumped this moniker back in uh, sorry moniker I keep saying moniker it's motto they dumped this motto back in 2021 which I remember like when they did that seems like it was longer well yeah. I think it was about the time that his son became gay or something like that I think they dumped it right about that time because didn't they like didn't they have like a young John and then they aged him yeah oh yeah. yeah. Oh, then, don't don't get they, don't get no age started on this. Puns <laughs> were so fun. I love the dynamic of Damian Wayne yeah. and and then they aged him up, which I didn't like, and then they made him gay. I'm like, okay, now we just feel like we're mm-hmm. we're playing corporate buzzword bingo at this point. Like nothing feels natural, nothing feels genuine. It's just here. How can we spike sales and it's just like uh which is like hey a comic company wants to make money you know big deal but it's just like oh it just and in comic books term and comic book like terms he was only young for a drop in the bucket and then they aged him up and they already had connor back which yeah it know, was it was me. now you yeah, have too many same looking two super boys yeah <laughs> yeah because I, I i love the little dynamic with them the super sons that was that was fun I'm waiting for Superboy Prime to come back and just kill John yeah. Kent and just be done with it. I would be very happy. Yeah. Very. Uh, I almost like I almost like the idea of an evil super uh Superboy 
better than this. I, I mean, I do like it better than the idea of John Kent. I'm like, yeah, I'd almost, if John Kent was a little evil, I'd be even happier than that. I just don't. <laughs> The fact that they had to make him like a minority of a minority, of, you know, and like it's like, what? Why is he gay? We already gayed up Tim Drake. Isn't that enough for you guys? Nope. We have to, like, we have to have uh, a mainstream hero that is going to be the Superman, but only for a brief time because sales have dropped so far that we have to bring our main hero back. So, uh, and uh, the the Aquaman, I'm the son of Black Manta, he's gay too, and yeah, the black uh, the the Cal- black Caldor. Yeah. Is uh, it Aqualad? I can't remember. I get its name. Is it Tempest? Con- yeah, he's sexual. Uh, Tempest? No, no that's no. It, it's it, it, he. He becomes Aqualad. Yeah, uh, uh, Calador. Like the new. Dude, new talk work. about talk about over representation at this point. It just seems yeah. like it would it would end up being just one superhero cir- a circle jerk after a while because holy crap, you have three of the the of the top. I wouldn't say trill because. Diana Troy doesn't have any kids, as far as I know. Right. So you got Diana. one of the one of the Bat family. You got one in the Super family, and if you had one in the, that would be all three. It would just be like, mm, statistically, <laughs> statistically, that's not even possible. But I mean, I don't know. I I have this love hate thing with DC nowadays. I'm like, sometimes y'all's books are uh, quite a bit better than Marvel books because some of the Marvel tripe that's been coming out lately uh i can't be bothered i'm like oh all this goblin stuff and <laughs> um you know they always have to have they have to have a spider-man event all the time and i'm like mm, i don't know i just can't get into it and then i'll come back to, to dc and i'll be like oh this is great this is great. and it's usually old books to be honest it, like for example yeah. uh the three jokers and that so not old books but like recent history yeah older. Like, oh that that was good that was good you know um uh, but this kind of stuff, just mainline storylines right here, drag me right out of it. Yeah, I just I get I get like, oh, I, I'm going to go back to Black Label because I cannot deal with this. This is just too, too stupid at this point. But anyways, happy to see that he's no longer the, for truth, justice and a better tomorrow. You know, um, when that first happened, I was like, I'm of two minds. One, it's irritating and stupid and unnecessary. And but the other part of me is like, well, I understand Superman is more of like a galactic hero. He's not just mm-hmm. American hero. He's international. He's intergalactic at this point. And and I'm like, so I'm like, it kind of makes sense, but it was the way it came about. It was more like it was just we want to show off how progressive and liberal we are. And I'm like. It was most of these things could be fine, but it, the way the smug way they go about it is just irritating. Like we would have common ground across the nation if these other people just didn't act so like high and mighty, so snooty about it. Mm-hmm. Like you take this, most people can probably get on board or at least listen. Like there's no civil conversation happening. So I'm like, yes. So the, the Superman saying. First of all, well, why is he changing his slogan? Does he any like the average issue of Superman? He's not really saying this a lot. It's all the it comes back to another spike in the news, another spike in sales, and I just don't buy it. I don't buy it that it, they're really trying to make any change. It doesn't like no, you're you're trying. And, you're trying and to start fun- controversy with your fan. It's not even controversy. Uh, they're trying. First of all, they're trying to get headlines because that stuff yeah. is going straight into the news. We all know yeah. this. The and news will grab onto that and be like, "Oh, look at how they're destroying!" And, and then they'll some be like, "Oh my god, how progressive! This is amazing!" You know. So it's gonna you're gonna get both sides uh, of the spectrum, uh, you know, news wise. And then yeah. uh, it gets the fans all uh, it gets the fans all pissed up, pissed off and talking about it. And then then you get the the speculators that go, hey, uh, if he's going to start doing that now, that's going to be like the first appearance of truth, justice and the whatever way I'm going to go pick that up. It, that's it's like a win win for them to do stupid shit like that. That's why. they yeah. do it. Yeah, it's it's so funny. And I'm like, yeah, a company wants to make a profits. Big deal. But it's also like, uh, I mean. To act like they're so righteous in doing it, when really it's like you just want to make money like anybody else. If you were real with it, just it would might be okay. Mm-hmm. But to feel like nobody about it, I'm like, get out of here. I just do not buy it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't buy it. 
I did not purchase any of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. All right. So moving on right along to the next topic. Rumors. This is a rumor. It's not. It's not. Uh, take it with a grain of salt, people. Marvel's Blade reboot delayed due to. I, I have a hard time with this guy's name. Maharshala Ali being unhappy with the proposed script. Now, I thought this was some old news. Um, I want to let you know you did say Ali right. <laughs> <laughs> So you, uh, you did it. Good I job. thought this was some old news. I had heard this a while back, but now it's getting reported again. So I'm guessing it's probably closer to true, but still we're going to call it rumor since I cannot confirm nor deny this. But uh, apparently they are, they, he doesn't like the script uh, because it had like two lackluster fight scenes in it. And the rest of it was just basically, ha ha, ho hum, you know, like a nothing mm. burger. And it's gotten so bad that they've had to start like rewriting the script. Apparently, I think Noah sent me an article where uh, now they're they're actually the 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 in credit scene for the Eternals where they showed the, the I guess off screen Blade was talking to uh, was a Black Knight, yeah, about the sword that that's now going to be axed from the movie, and they're rewriting it to make him more happy. And I'm like, well. If if this turns out to be a good movie for the, for this reason, more power to him because I can't imagine a Blade movie with two fight scenes. Yeah. I cannot imagine it. it, it you got to and if if it was if I'm him, I'm watch. I'm thinking, man, I'm not even gonna be as cool as Wesley Snipes. Yeah, what? you've got a lot to live up to. You have yeah. a ton to live up to. The first movie was just action packed. And and so to come in with this whimper is just doing what the comics do to Blade, where they're like, oh, Blade, he's now the school teacher at some whatever. And he he's a, he's a good guy. He's real nice. And I'm like, what? You can't do that to Blade. He's a badass. He's a, yeah. he's a night stalker. He's supposed to be out there killing vampires. And if you're not doing yeah. that in this movie and you're just trying to connect him to an Eternals movie or make him part of the the, the entire MCU... I think you're going to, it's going to be a poor movie for it. So yeah. that's, that's my thoughts. Well, I, I like the actor a lot. He was in true detective with Steven Dorf, who yeah. was, you know, Deacon Frost in the other movie. So that was a cool little, little tie in. But um, I mean, I, I, I want it to be good. It, it does have a lot to live up to, but if he, if the actor himself, who mm-hmm. um, he's already actually in the Marvel universe, he was, uh, he was, he was, was a cotton mouth. Uh, yeah, and, he was, and Luke Cage. Yeah, um, you know he, he probably has a good insight of what like a a good movie needs to be, and like fight well, scenes with Blade and because he, he, Luke Cage, he knows. Okay, we know what bad looks like. Let's do. <laughs> <laughs> now, Luke Cage wasn't that bad. Season two was ridiculous. It was like a comedy. It, but <laughs> it was not. It was like not Iron Fist bad. I never, well, I never, I never watched it. I, I was like, uh, I like Daredevil. Uh, you guys, and see, to me, the thing that it, were there two sets of Defenders because I, from what I remember of reading Defenders, is it was like, uh, the Hulk, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange Hulk, Silver, Silver Surfer. Surfer. Um, those are the Defenders I knew. So when they were like, oh look, guys, these are the Defenders, and I was like, uh, I think they were just making something up. They're just I was like, like You're yeah, just we got all these characters. Reaching? Yeah, we couldn't. I don't know. We, can't, we couldn't call them. Uh, what what was the line? Uh, Marvel Knights. We can't. We yeah. can't call them Marvel Knights. So. No, really. Yeah, I guess that's true. That I was don't that. Ever see themselves as the defenders, if I'm not mistaken, and that's yeah. another pet. And where it's like, just call yourself the thing. We know it's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, know. I- I just uh, couldn't be bothered. I heard that Iron Fist was bad, so I never watched it. I watched uh, Alias, or uh, not Alias. We don't call it Alias anymore, do we? Call it Jessica Jones. Um, yeah. I watched Jessica Jones the first season. Oh, God, to be honest, I did not know there was a second season. I was so like after season two of uh, Daredevil, I was so like, oh my gosh, the Punisher is going to be. You know, it's like I was so yeah. fixated on that. And then I watched the show, and I was like, oh, to hell with this. Why? Is this I'm not so lie to you. bad? I don't think I finished all of all of the Defender stuff. I don't even know where I left off. It's been too long for me to go back. Well, now you can't yeah, even go back. Yeah. They're not on Netflix anymore. Well, they're on Disney. No, they're not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're on Disney Plus. I looked the other day. I couldn't find Daredevil. Hmm. 
I couldn't find it. I looked. I was like, oh, I wouldn't watch some Daredevil. I wouldn't look. He wasn't there. I was like, uh, that's very strange. I, hey, hold on. I, let me go. Let me go into my thing right quick. Y'all go ahead and talk to the monks yourselves. And so what are you doing this weekend? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. <clears throat> oh, that makes oh, me. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, um, you know, I got, so if they act, if they omit any connection to the Eternals, there is no reason for that movie to exist. They can just be a dream. It's like there's nothing. Well, for- that's how much I cared about Eternals. I I hadn't seen it yet, even, and I didn't even know Blade was at the end. So that, well, that's it, the news to me today. You hear a voice, and a lot of people said it was Blade, but you don't see the guy on screen, so they can say that's anybody now. You know who it was? Um, uh, it was Val Kilmer. Yeah, I mean, it was Val Kilmer's son. <laughs> Her son, who is now playing Blade. Okay, <laughs> so I definitively can tell you that there is no, not hide nor hair, of any of the Netflix series on Disney Plus. Nothing. It is. I just hmm. searched. I uh, just searched my account. I heard Nothing. that they were going there. It's not there. It's not there. Yeah, but Jane can. Well, I'm like I'm looking at it right now. Jane can dunk. Saga, Daredevil, Jessica. I'm looking at it right now on, on Disney Plus. It's it's under Defender Saga, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, Punisher. Where it is not it's on this really, one. Is it just difficult but, to? No, I mean I just scrolled down. I I I, I clicked on Marvel. Well, it is not on my. I, I I searched. I'm in I'm in the actual just plain old search. I typed so, in Defenders. Nothing. This is yeah, more like. Yeah, right. Be like a like a user interface issue where it's like it's easy to find somewhere on one format but not on another. Oh, wait, uh, are you under like the child one? Like, do you have to put uh, a pin in? No, I didn't think I was. Do you have to put a pin in when you do it when you get on? Uh, no. So yeah, I, I every time I do, I have to put a pin in so I can watch Deadpool and stuff like that. Uh-huh. All the yeah. all the R rated stuff. So you might have to set yours up to. Yeah, no, to it might be set everything. up incorrectly because yeah, it's not there. I was like, what the? Yeah, it, you telling me I can't there, watch but... Daredevil? Okay, that's probably that's probably what's going on. So okay, I'll it is it there. Out. You just probably have. To I can set see yours everything up, so. else. I I can see pretty much everything else. I just couldn't see that. Okay, well that's good to know. I'm gonna yeah. go and look into that. Because I remember when they these. These first came on there. I had to set it up just to be able to see these. So I'll be able to see the, the R rated stuff. Yeah. But they are there, folks. <laughs> don't, okay. don't listen to Ty. Hey, so. I can't help it. If I type it in search, it doesn't come up. I don't know what's there. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, they just didn't put it there. But, anyways, anyways, <laughs> uh, moving on to the next topic because I don't think there's much more to say about this. Um, Hollywood yeah. has a pretty low opinion of its audience according to a uh person who actually worked on the, the spider-man into the spider-verse and spider-man is the new one's called across right as far there as across, across the spider-verse yeah i think the new so, one's called across the spider-verse hmm. and the, the the first one was called into right as far yeah. as I know. Anyways, apparently they they wondered they were a little bit worried. The the execs that greenlit this were a little bit worried that the audience was not smart enough to understand uh multiverse stuff. Yeah. Like they wouldn't understand the multiverse, which I find it, to be absolutely it, retarded. Yeah. Anytime. And then, then we get the, the uh, Oscar winning movie of the year, uh, which is all about multiverses. <laughs> So yeah. I'm guessing we do. <laughs> so whoever said this is clearly one of the, this is, this falls into the whole fan shaming. I'm not going to go into it anymore, but I just, it, obviously it's a pet peeve of mine, but anytime they say the audience is too dumb, I'm like, you know what? Some of them. Yes. Some of like the moms and the grandparents, like who don't follow this stuff at all. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say dumb. It's just not in their, not on their radar, so they just don't register that stuff as quickly. But I don't think it's a concept that they can't grasp or comprehend. Right. Person has been around for a long time. It's not that, a hard concept to understand. Parallel universes. How, it's, it, you're not talking about the math of it. You're just talking about the the this 
could exist. We, we don't have Stephen Hawking out here, like in his robot voice, explaining what yeah. this universe. Like, no, we don't have that. And even back in like Twilight Zone, you had Rod Sterling, and like, imagine if you will, a parallel world of blah blah blah. And like, yeah, have been around. It's it's, it's not an old concept. And, and literally, it, just about <laughs> any movie that they do something like that, there's someone there to explain. So you're telling me there's another world just like this one, but this instead? It's like Get they, they, they they will explain it to you, whether Kids it's a it's a one th- it's a throwaway line or what? Yeah, you know. I just I, I thought this was such a a, a stupid opinion of, of of somebody who thinks that they're so high. Br- oh, I might understand this, but will the audience get it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gonna get it, bro. If they got Star Wars, if they We're got. It, 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 this isn't the first time we've ever seen this kind of stuff. Like, uh, for example, uh, what is it? Um, uh, He-Man as kids. Mm-hmm. He yeah. went from one universe to another universe because yep. they wanted to save money on the, on the budget. Yep. Yeah. Not Cheaper. hard to understand as a kid. I got mm-hmm. it. I was like, Oh, so they went from yeah. Eternia to our earth. That's awesome. Easy. Yeah. Cheap film on present day earth. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? So, uh, uh I think this is so stupid and it's, it shows that somebody had their head up their ass where they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm, you know, smelling their own farts. I'm so smart. I got it. But will the audience get it? And I'm like, yeah, say that. I'm like, even if that's not what you meant, then you have to just go back and read the dictionary for what words mean and how to talk. Yeah. Well, like, let, let's let's say like this, like you we've all watched movies where maybe there's something at the end. We're like, what was that all about? And like you go and look it up and the director says like, oh, this kind of represented this or something like that. And you're like, oh, OK, it was it was a, it was an artistic choice or, you know, something like that. Like they never were saying you're dumb. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you know, this is their interpretation of it. So, I mean, yeah. who cares? Just make a smart movie, for God's sake. Just make it smart. <laughs> If we're too dumb to figure it out, we'll look it up. It doesn't matter. It's a flipping cartoon. It's not yeah, like it's you not were doing be. this stuff on a mainstream uh, movie that was going to be out like a, a mainstream Marvel movie yet. This was, I think, the, uh, Across the Spider-Verse, that's before even um, uh, the Spider-Man movie, No Way Home or whatever. Oh, well, for you know, sure. We, yeah. Yeah. It is, and, and, and the multiverse of Matt, oh, that, this movie came out in 2018. It's it, it's not like you it's not like you were going to be taking a big chance on an adult watching this going I'm so lost no the kids were going to go no. awesome there's there's all the yeah. you know yeah. there, here's the deal this was like a seed for uh, any further multiverse movies because you'd make this one the kids love it they want to go see the the big Marvel movies now and their parents will go say hey what's going on I don't I'm uh, I don't know what's happening well dad they're doing this and then, oh, okay I get it that's exactly how it would happen even if these this stupid audience existed that the these guys were so scared that we're not we're not going to understand uh the multiverse yeah. that's what would have happened so why they were worried I just don't get it, it just, I don't know that having a low opinion of your audience I think is really messed up so and yeah. that's also that's also shooting the creative the creators of it like in the foot it's like you know yeah. no you don't make it too good guys because like i mean or when you walk out you're of a not, movie you're not good enough to make the to pull this off is what they're yeah. saying too I like just, if you walk out of a movie and you're still thinking about it whether you understand everything or not you're just like you that's cool like if i if i like walk out of inception i'm thinking was it a dream there? What's happening? I mean, that's that's yeah, something that makes you think. You know, what's 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 wrong with thinking? And I don't know. That just really annoys me. about these are the people in charge of these big multi million dollar things, and yeah, just the fact that somebody would say that is just so irritating. And I'm like, okay, say you misspoke. Say it was taken out of context. Okay, exactly how? You know yeah. what I mean? And. I didn't see the first one because it didn't look good. And this one doesn't look good either. So I don't even know what the big fuss is about. Mm, yeah, no, I don't either. I, I again, this is another uh, crummy opinion from the powers that be and, you know, go to hell. If you, don't, if you think we're smart enough, why are you even making movies for us? You should be just showing us pretty colors on the screen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But moving on from this topic. Uh, Bruce Campbell gets prickly at one of his, at the South by Southwest premiere of his movie, Evil Dead Rise. Well, then they deserved it. (laughs) So apparently, um, 
There was a guest who had fallen asleep with his legs resting on another audience member seat. And then he woke up and he goes, <laughs> he woke up and goes, this movie sucks. <laughs> Where uh, wow. Bruce Campbell apparently says, what are you doing here? And then he eventually, uh, he eventually got pissed and said, get the F out of here. Not, not, not uh, censoring his language like Bruce Campbell uh, is known not to do. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I bet you money there was applause. I, I didn't read anything about that, but I bet you money there was applause. Anybody that's willing to go see Bruce Campbell, I mean, willing to go see Evil Dead Rise just to see Bruce Campbell, I'm sure they applauded him because yeah, that Bruce guy was Campbell. probably beaten in the parking lot afterwards <laughs> <laughs> by Bruce Campbell. By uh, Bruce Campbell and a mass of fans. Yeah, uh, but anyways, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I can't blame the guy because that first movie sucked. I did not. It was too mean spirited. I just didn't. It did not feel like are Evil you, Dead to me. Are you talking about that? Uh, the Evil Dead remake. The Evil yeah. Dead remake. I just oh, okay, okay. It was too yep. too much for me. I was like, this has gotten gross for the sake of being gross. It wasn't like uh, I, and it didn't have any like. There was no redeeming character to me. I was like, eh, the girl. I guess. I am. I never watched it, and I, I don't know if I'll ever watch this one. And I, I mean, I'm not saying like I'm I'm against horror movies or anything like that. It's like I am really only here for Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I am right. only here for Ash. That's it. That is it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, the problem with that movie is very similar to that recent Hulu Hellraiser movie that came out last year, where the protagonist is just someone I'm like, I don't know if we're supposed to like this person. Are we supposed to be rooting for these Cenobites and these mm-hmm. people? Like a lot of horror movies are like this where I'm like, I guess we're not supposed to like the hero yeah. and we want whoever the villain monster thing is to win. Is, is that yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. You know? Cause that's yeah. basically what happened in the first one. I, I was like, yeah. I mean, she did the main protagonist girl. She did technically win. Uh, but I, I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, whenever the only part that I like about that movie is when Bruce Campbell showed up at the end, he's all groovy. That was it. I was all, yeah. well, that was an hour and, and some change in my life. I'll never get back. And it's <laughs> like, I, I want these movies to do good. Cause I know this is their movies and you know, I, I like them, but the same thing with blade and you know, uh, Wesley Snipes is like, you've got a lot to live up to, you know, stepping into Bruce Campbell's shoes. Like yeah. what, what, what can the person do? Like they really can't do anything. They, they can't lop off a hand and have a chainsaw hand. You know, they can't, mm-hmm. the characters just really can't live up to him. He's like a, I, I mean, just he, he, think he's just a you, character. He's a character, this, you know, I don't think this movie franchise for, for at least my age works without it having some camp and some, uh, some funniness to it. Yeah. And the first one was not that was not that. Uh, even if you watch the original Evil Dead, the the first one, I feel like there was some moments where I was like, "Ha, ah, that's funny." But um, yeah, there's still some, some little campiness to it. Yeah, I mean, there's they, still some campiness. I think they were trying to be serious, but just them coming out as who they are, you know, they they still had some funniness into it. Mm-hmm. It just this the 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 first one is stupid mean uh, stupid mean spirited uh, spirited. Uh, I imagine I've I've seen pre- previews for the second one. It looks like just, just gonna be more of the same of tearing somebody's eyeball out or chopping off a limb with something and that. It, it, no. That was just it was just gore porn. That's what it was. It was gore porn. And don't get me wrong. I mean, some people like that stuff. I, I, I like to, I like a little bit of the gun porn every once in a while, but, uh, the gore porn, I'm like, eh, you know, even sometimes when I watched the, 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 the evil dead TV show that was on stars, mm-hmm. there were some times where I was like, Whoa, that was a lot of, I mean, but it was yeah. still, it had that, it had that, um, that humor aspect that made it like, you know, Oh, this is okay. It's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's hard to explain. It's this. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I know exactly what you mean. It's hard to explain, but like, you're like, yeah, that was horribly bad. But then also it was kind of funny. funny. So yeah. it's like, like yeah. one of the, one of the scenes where I was like, Holy crap was where he was in the morgue. And it was, they were, they, this scene was like, we're just being gross. This is all we're doing is being gross. Cause remember he's in the morgue and there's that <laughs> uh, intestine monster or whatever that reaches oh, yeah. over and pulls him inside the dude's butt. <laughs> yes. Yep. 
<laughs> he's like, not the butt, not the butt. I, I was like, oh my god, I was like, this is disgusting, but it is so funny. Yeah, and I couldn't help myself yeah. but laugh, you know. And that's how yeah. I feel about most of the Evil Dead's. Like, this is really disgusting, but I cannot help but laugh. And these new yeah. ones, it's like I can't help but look away. Holy crap, that dude just got stabbed in the eye. In the yeah, it's like I don't want to see that. Yeah, I don't like, really see it. Like, see, super serious Evil Dead is not appeal to me. You know, like mm-hmm. the first movie, you could argue it's like really trying. Like the very first one mm-hmm. has some creepiness to it. But sure. You, but you like Ash. <laughs> it's yeah. like these movies are just devoid of having this character that we like even a little. And I'm at the point now where I'm like, if I hear a remake and we're trying to be like as far away from the original character, like, I I almost hate to say it, but if I hear like, it's going to be a female lead now, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what I need to know about this movie. Yeah. How it's trying to do. And it's, uh, if if I had followers on at John McBride on Twitter, they'd be like, John McBride hates women. (laughs) Hey, that's the, <laughs> yeah. that's the caption of this episode. Oh, and to be uh, to just to let you guys know, now we have a uh, middle aged mutants has its own Twitter. Oh, really? So oh. I, I was going to ask you, John, do you want me to follow you? Do you want to follow us? I don't. Whatever. I will People, my, my, we will start posting you wanna, stuff. Is there anything you want to put on there to say for you? You know, to get you in trouble? Yes. I mean, we're, we, you've already started off well yourself. I'm just wondering. If <laughs> <it's> <laughs> we need that cherry on top. So yeah. send all your hate tweets to the middle aged mutants and be sure to specify that you're talking to Ty. <laughs> but um, but but it's just like if I hear that, I'm I'm thinking, I really doubt whoever's writing it had this really awesome character in mind that they couldn't wait to bring to life. I'm like, no, we're building from the ground up, and as chances are, it's probably not going to be good. You know, but maybe maybe not. But in the case of this Evil Dead remake, I'm like. I'm either just disgusted or bored. Yeah, and that's, I think true. that's what it. I don't know. He just and they kill the dog in the first a, one of the the new movies. Yeah, they kill the dog, and I was like, I'm out. Screw this. Once well, you did, kill a dog, did, that's that's it for me. Did John Wick come and avenge it? <laughs> it was, no, he did. The only way it's okay. Yeah, there was I, a trailer that my wife and I watched that we. We watched where like and there's a dog in the beginning of the trailer. There's no dog at the end of the trailer. We're like, I don't know if we're gonna watch this. Is that dog play the- <laughs> well, yeah. there's an app now that my wife has called Does the Dog Die? And, oh, really? Or a website or a website. I think it's a website. I, I at first it was I think it's an app and a website, but it says Does the Dog Die? And you go in and you can find out. And now we religiously check that before well, because I yeah, can't let- handle it. Let me ask you this, Ty. Since you're, you're you know, you're, you're, you're a dog lover. You, you love dogs more than people. It's safe mm-hmm. to say. Oh yeah, I love um, more than kids. That's for sure. <laughs> um, so when you watch a movie like John Wick, where the dog dies immediately in the movie, but the the point of the movie is him like avenging the dog, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Do you like that? No, I I honestly have never seen that scene because I can't handle it. I'd be like, oh, dude. Yeah. You don't. They, they don't show anything. Uh, yeah, I know. I still can't. I still thing, can't. But... I, the whimper. I can't even hear that. Yeah, it just they do. It, that, it, it bothers rough. me to such a degree that I cannot <laughs> handle it. I, dude, I if remember, somebody uh, would have hurt my dogs, I would have. I would have used every bit of my ammunition to make them pay, just like John Wick. Because I, I cannot handle somebody hurting a, a dog or my specifically my dog because it's just, yeah. it enrages me when i see people being mean to the pets i'm like i'm about to step up and knock a mud hole in your uh, ass because the, i'm so pissed remember at red dead online we felt bad about killing the wolves <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in the other john wick movies does he get like a new dog every time he keeps on dying no, <laughs> not every time no. he gets he gets that dog at the beginning of the first movie and then uh-huh. he has was, that dog the dog's fine couldn't own dogs they get killed maybe just take it away the pets they they learn not to come after his other dogs pretty fast so mm-hmm. <laughs> but um you know i i'm glad that bruce campbell's out and doing things yes yeah. nice to yeah, see yeah. him yeah, yeah good good on you bruce i i'm not probably going to watch this movie uh but i i god bless you for making it and yeah. i hope that you have success uh, moving on yeah. to the next topic, um, Global Comics. This is comic book news now. Global Comics is a new 
digital only player in town okay this is this is the company that's supposed to be taking like picking up the mantle where co- comicsology uh le- left off they i mean w- from is what comicsology I s- going away i think comicsology is dying slow a slow death of a thousand cuts it's just uh-huh. it's eventually do they, do we'll, they just not do they not it'll cover eventually everything be or just what? called it'll just be eventually probably called kindle just to give you a heads up odds comicsology will eventually just be kindle that's uh, get taken into the Kindle app because they've fired just about every employee that worked over there. It's like a skeleton crew, so you, it won't be long until it brings it gets brought under the Kindle banner. Mm. It, it, it really kind of almost is, and it, and it sucks. But Global Comics is coming in, uh, and from what I've seen of their website, it's mostly like independent stuff that they're letting people actually publish on their uh, site. But now they just. Uh, signed a, uh, I guess, an exclusive contract or, or, or exclusive rights, whatever, with um, Boom Studios, with Image Comics, and Archie Comics, and I don't know them, but also Tokyo Pop. So these are the new big players that they have that are coming into their um, marketplace. Mm. And so if, from what I saw on their website, they have like, it's like $70 a year to uh, read their books. And you get, I, I, as far as I understand, you get their entire library. But now, on top of that, you're going to be able to see these four uh, studios come in and put uh, put their books up. And I, I don't see Marvel or DC coming in and doing this. So this is no, probably they've got the, their own stuff. Yeah, this is probably the strongest move. I think that it is a detriment to all comic books to not have them in one spot. But I cannot blame them for not going ahead and. Uh, you know, doing the Netflix thing where they, the people remember when Netflix came out, everybody was throwing their eggs in that basket and oh, yeah. Nef- Netflix was like, hell yeah. Yes, of course. I'll, I'll let yeah. you do this. And, um, after a while it got to be, well, if we distributed our own digital yeah. uh, VOD, we could make our own money. And so then you got all this stuff and now we're back in the boat. Like b- before the, I gave up this I gave up on regular like satellite and cable TV back in God almighty. It was before I want to say it was before 2013, 2012, maybe I gave up on it. I was like, good Lord, the the amount of money you spend for just heaps of garbage that I didn't want to even see was just astonishing. And that was like, at the time I started to get broadband and I was like, Oh, you can watch this Netflix thing. And it's awesome. And you can yeah. watch, um, uh, Netflix everything. seemed to have everything. I think Hulu the was there too, but Netflix yeah. was the big one. And I remember being just like, well, all I need is this because everybody's heaping their stuff on Netflix. And yeah. now we're back. I mean, it's all, all the cart now. Like you can pick what you want to watch, which is fine. That's awesome. But yeah. now it's like, everybody wants 10 bucks for their VOD service. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. you guys have just gone and done wh- what you were doing before. But now we see the individual prices and we understand because whenever it was on, Whenever you had uh, like a cable or satellite thing, they were negotiating those prices for you. And to to fill in the gaps, they were putting in a bunch of trash along with it. Now you're seeing what the, they, the studios think their stuff was worth. And, and they think, oh, yeah, they must think that they're the only person that's, that's, that's uh, trying to get you to buy their stuff because $10 a month is insane. Yeah. <laughs> $15 a month is insane. It doesn't make any sense. Some of these prices. And if it like, for example, um, I, I only pay for Netflix and I pay for, uh, what's the other one? Netflix, Disney plus and playboy channel. No, uh, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, prime Pretty much prime uh, prime. Uh, yeah. is a yearly thing. And I, I mainly only had it because I was getting the, uh, the two day free shipping. But uh, the yeah. <laughs> HBO comes comes with my uh, with my internet bill. Uh, if this it was just lumped in there, like oh, you pay for our gig service. Well, also when you pay for the gig yep. service, you get AT and T permanent. Yep. And guess what, Ty? Yep. I had the same thing, and I was grandfathered in, and I added James a line for his first phone. And mm-hmm. since I changed my plan, I lost it. Oh, Even though I'm paying no. double now, I was so pissed. Uh, now go drown him. Drown him for for wanting a phone. I'm not drowning him. He didn't actually didn't want a phone. Like we just thought, you need to have a phone if you're staying home alone. Oh, well, then drown yourself because you're the you're the problem. Uh, no, the problem is AT and T. 
Man, I, I feel him because, you know, back in, oh gosh, 2000 or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. my mom was like, you need a cell phone. I was like, mom, I do oh, not yeah. want a cell phone. I do not want a cell phone. She's like, you need one. You really need one. <laughs> that, that my mom did the same thing when I moved I here. I fought it so hard. I was like, mom, the idea of you knowing where I am at all times really yeah. bothers me. Being able to contact me at any time really disturbs me and bothers me. I do not want. And nowadays it's kind of, you have to, cause like you ha- there's stuff happens. I mean, you break car breaks yeah. or whatever, but in, in, but in the that, same thing happened back in the day. We just seem to just deal with it. Weird. Just deal, dealt with it. But um, yeah. I've eventually abated it and I, I took the damn thing and it is exactly what I thought. My mom's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, God, it's two in the morning, mom. I'm at home asleep. You know, this little, just she just wanted to yeah. know where I was and if I was in if I was okay. Uh so I, I get him not wanting a cell phone because I think I, about that for different back then. They really were just communication devices. We didn't yeah. have all the stuff now. Because if you, I'm like I'm I like you say that about your son, I'm like, man, does he not know what phones can do? No, I mean <laughs> he just he just didn't he didn't really care. Like and then like now he can't live without it. Like now he does like he he does like YouTube videos and stuff like he was doing a Mario Kart like video for his channel last night. So it's like now Watch he out. can't. And I think we're the same way. Like we can't live without our phones now. But I was yeah. with Ty. Like I didn't want a phone. Mm-mm. I told my mom, yeah. I don't need a phone. And it wasn't like I wasn't like, I don't want her to know where I was. It's just like I was like, I don't know. I it, it, it it really was just all the it was just for talking. I was like, I could just go call you on a pay phone, which there were pay phones back then. So that's Mm-hmm. how long ago that was mm-hmm. but you could go yeah you really needed it and help businesses would let you use it oh yeah you want to go ahead use my phone yeah it's fine. yeah it's just it now it's i mean now it's kind of like a way of life but yeah Different anyways world. global comics i wish you the best of luck um i i i like boom and i like image archie whatever tokyo don't know who you are but um, i'm sure someone likes archie comics i'm sure somebody likes archie these days but they're good still luck around to you guys to keep the <laughs> keep up the good fight with the digital comics uh i honestly can't be bothered with most digital comics but uh keep up the good fight that's kind of where that's kind of me and john's jam yeah, yeah i was exclusively digital and i read pretty much only dc universe infinite ultra that's a mouthful oh Whoa. you got the ultra i'm the ultra, ultra. somebody's I'm ultra. somebody's got money <laughs> i'm i i, I am that's, not but i i'm also like comiXology so that's why i'm a little bummed if that's well, gonna go it's, it, yeah, it's, it's sort of like to your point earlier like as soon as companies figured out like we don't really need this other person to do this for us i'm like oh like comiXology like once like DC went away, and I guess I don't know if Marvel's still there or not, but yeah, they got their own. Once no, they're, DC, they're, you, they're you, there, you can get Marvel books, yeah, yeah. But once DC went away, I'm like, I have no reason to have this, and it became like an Amazon. It got absorbed into Amazon, and Ty is correct. It's just going to be Kindle, and Kindle's funny because if you read it on a Kindle device, it doesn't. That isn't like a color device, which is like most of them. Mm-hmm. You can read your black and white comics, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> And you probably can't no guided view or anything. At least I don't think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. but I'm on yeah. the digital brain. Y'all are the problem. You're the problem. <laughs> well, but speaking of uh, uh, physicals, which I'm more of a fan of still, uh, Savage Avengers will be in my hands hopefully next week. The, Look at is, that cast of characters you look at the cast of characters i like mean the best of the best right there and this is apparently the conan's avengers they should have just called it conan's oh. avengers okay so we got venom we got brother voodoo i heard that he got his doctorate so now it's probably dr voodoo we have mm-hmm. conan frank castle electra and wolverine baby I am so super pumped by for this book. It's probably never going to be reprinted because Marvel no longer owns the rights to Conan. So I think that it was kind of a a, a hard. I think it was kind of a hard negotiation to actually get this book printed in the first place. Um, so is it I, something to do? With, is it something to do with Conan? Is that why? Co- like well, with Con- the rights Mar- or something? Marvel Marvel no longer owns Conan. I think it's Titan Comics now that owns Conan. Oh, the, I did not know that. Uh, okay. They they either lost the rights or they gave up the rights, uh, and now 
um, Conan is uh, under Titan and they'll be putting whatever books out um, that they want. But, uh, and I don't think that Marvel's going to, in the, in the bad situation that Marvel's in, they're not going to license Conan for freaking Savage Avengers. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But, uh, so I'm super pumped for this book. It's coming out soon. I am absolutely livid though, that, Marvel in their infinite wisdom of putting these, uh, of mapping out these books and putting them together, f- decided not to include, not to include the Avengers No Road Home storyline, which tells us how Conan got to the Marvel universe where he's teamed up with these guys. This book, uh, I don't think it's even one of the thickest omnibuses out there. I think it's only about what a thousand pages or whatever, or maybe less. I think it's actually in the eight hundred range. Um. They couldn't include that trade paperback because I guess Jerry Duggan didn't write it. And I'm like, what the hell, Marvel? If you're going to have Conan in this part of the Marvel Universe, you need to at least have something in there that tells us how he got there. Now I had to I had to actually go hunt down this book. I'm trying to get it off eBay so that I could actually know the entirety of the story. I, I don't think I'm the only one wrong in this. Come on, Marvel. What the hell? It, you're already giving us books that have like shoddy quality. For example, if you pick up a Marvel uh, a floppy comic these days, it is made of the most trash material I really? have ever come across. This is worse than whenever we were kids and it was like newsprint on the interior. News, yeah, it was newspaper. Now it feels like, I, I don't know, It's it's it feels like wax, not wax paper, but like thinner it's kind of a like a waxy thin paper. It's very terrible, and it, it it I can tell if you were to even breathe on this thing, it would uh, it would probably crumple up and or, or start to grow mold. It is so thin of a paper stock. It is pretty pathetic. And in these omnis, to get their um their size to a, you know get them to a manageable size, the paper is hyper thin, very very thin. And what I've noticed, I I have the uh, Spider Man um by Nick Spencer. Uh, I noticed on uh, these, there's these pages where they have like a, uh, t- not a texture, but it's like a, it's like a, a visual texture. Whenever I barely touch those, if I have any degree of oil on my finger, it makes a mark on the page. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> this, book, this book is expensive. What you can't do this kind of stuff. And on the other hand, I have boom studios, uh, uh, once in future, that book, that paper is super thick and nice, and beautiful. You can't see the front. Some of the Marvel Omnis are the paper is so thin, you can see what's printed on the back of the page from the front of the page. Mm. And uh, the the Boom Studios, once a feature, like I said, it, it, you, there's no bleed through. It's beautiful paper stock. So Marvel, get your ass in gear. Make <laughs> get a, give us thicker paper. Give us the entirety of the story. And if if it's too much to put in one Omni, then make two of them. Just continue the story. I don't know what to tell you, but that's just here at Middle Age Mutants. We care about paper stock first. Yes, we do. We care about story second. <laughs> well, don't y'all remember yeah. whenever like the paper quality went up? It was like yeah, I want to no, say Cross Gen was the you remember Cross Gen? I don't know if you all remember Cross. I remember Cross Gen. I, I remember vaguely like, like Sojourn and that kind of stuff that came out of that. A lot of there was a bit, kind of an exodus from Marvel to uh cross gen and the only reason cross gen really failed was a uh the, the it was mainly because the the guy who came up with the idea had this really kind of goofy idea which marvel is doing the same thing right now of having every book be a tie-in to a main story of the universe yeah so yeah. that is the kiss of death in in a comic book uh company and it just eventually went away, but cross gen was kind of the first ones to come out with really nice paper stock. And it was like, wow, this is actually like high quality material here. And, and it was funny because shortly after that Marvel and DC, they followed suit. You'd see more like, uh, what was it? Like, um, the covers were made of like a card stock. And then you would see like this better quality paper inside that didn't, you know, like wrinkle up or, or was it newsprint? So, yeah. yeah. We have the cross gen to thank for that, but now we have like the sh- you know the Biden economy to thank for the crappy uh, paper <laughs> stock that we have now and the, the mass mass inflation. Um, so, thanks a lot, Biden. Anyways, yeah. I remember um, back in the day there was a Star Trek: The Next Generation and X Men had a crossover in comics. Yeah. And I, was, I, was, I, was, oh, yeah. I was all about it, and um, I remember I got the I forget if it was like a collected edition or it's one of the issues. 
And I guess I was just so feverish in reading it. I must have pressed too hard on the cover. There was a thumbprint over like data space or something. <laughs> and I'm so annoyed forever. <laughs> oh, that would that irritate me so bad, dude. I remember our friend Robbie, he would, I would be talking with him on the phone. He's like, yeah, I, uh, he did weird stuff. He's like, I put, um, my comic book in the freezer. I remember that. And I was like, why, why did you do that? And he's all, because it's really cool. You put your comic book in the freezer and you pull it out. All the ink is gone. Like the, the, the lettering ink is, it goes (laughs) away. And I was like, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. And I don't know why you would destroy a comic book like that. That was like a card sent to me. Did you ever try it? I never tried. I, I was like, hell no. Try. I mean, if I bought like a crappy book, I guess. I don't know if I bought like an Archie or something. I'd throw it in there and do that. But yeah, Well, I've never tried either, but I remember him telling me that. So what we need you viewers to do is let us know in the comments if someone has done this. Take one of your, really slab, comic, take one of your slab comics, open it. Uh, it, it we're to, let's say like 8.5. Don't go as high as 9.8, 8.5. Take your slab comic, open it, stick it in the freezer, and tell us what happens uh, to the ink on the lettering. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, moving on from this topic to another comic book topic, Tim Drake's yeah. run as uh, the the standalone robin run the this is like the first one in what we're talking like mm, was the first uh, i guess the first one would have been in the 90s with chuck yeah Dixon. it would have been 90s yeah because that was he's had like sporadic stuff and there, there there's never been like a true like ongoing as far as i well or, in or, the, he had a lengthy, he did have a lengthy run in the 90s and into the 2000s but I think it's McDaniel been, did part of one that's why that's the only part i have is the the McDaniel Real quick, it's funny. The first Robin issue was came out during like the Nightfall story, so we were deep into like Jean Paul Valley and Bane and stuff like that mm-hmm. when Robin first comes onto the scene. It was just an interesting time to launch a solo book. Did it? Robin. Did it? Like, well, because I know you went through all that and you were doing every crossover and everything like that. Yeah. Was there a point in that where he's like, "Hey, check out my new suit"? <laughs> His new, I mean, he had been Robin for a while before that. This is just him getting his own series. So, um, like, there was, he was already in that suit. Yeah, prior he had to that. Been in that for a while. I mean, actually, I don't think was, comic book characters uh, call attention to that either. Like, hey guys, check out my new dust. <laughs> sometimes they do. Sometimes, you know, but uh, Nightwing sure did. He was all like, hey, check out my seventies disco outfit. <laughs> it was funny. Titans. <laughs> you know, it's funny is that Tim Drake came around like not that long after jason todd died like when i was a kid i thought there was years between this like not really he was kind of like coming onto the scene fairly quickly and i will tell you from the older issues that i've read and um there was no indication tim drake was he he had quite a few lady friends back in the day i know (laughs) he's a man whore is what he was (laughs) he's kind of Getting his groove on back in the day. I know, day. yeah. He, 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 that's what I don't understand. He was kind of like the Peter Parker of, of DC because Peter Parker was also the same way, it, it, and mainly in the Ultimates, but uh, in the Ultimate Universe. But uh, yeah, Tim Drake, it, he had his, he had his uh, share of poondang, and I don't understand <laughs> why all of a sudden they're like, nap, nap. He's bi. I think they said he was bi, right? They didn't like say he was like full on gay. Which you know. Yeah. You- Hey, he's Bob, but just don't pretend he was always this way. I'm like, no, he was not. No, he that's was not. Just no, a lie. That is just a straight up lie. Yeah. But, I, yeah. I, I just, I, I don't understand. And he's like, I'm sick of uh, taco. Want sausage now? I don't get like that. <laughs> like, what causes you to 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 do that? Uh, all of a sudden, after what we're talking, gosh, when did Jason Todd die? Did he die in the oh. late eighties? Yeah, it was funny. So it's yeah. funny to think about it. The Batman movie came out like roughly around the same time because the movies were going were like the movie was real different from what there was some heavy stuff going on <clears throat> in the comics. And the movies like I mean it was what it was, it was great, but it was just very it was a drastic change uh or a departure. It's just fascinating to think about what was going on in the actual Batman comics as opposed to the uh original the eighty nine movie, but as far oh, yeah, as the, it was, it was Batman four thirty six in August of nineteen eighty nine that we saw the first appearance of. Uh, yeah, Tim so it was just very bizarre yeah. to think that. Yeah, there is this other whole other thing going on. <laughs> I'm like, wow. But um, just, 
yeah, I don't know. I just, I wish, I wish they'd have more respect for legacy characters than they do now. It just seems like they just can, they'll take whatever like niche family character that they can find and go, mm, did anybody care about this guy? No, let's just turn him gay or let's turn him bi or let's, yeah. you know, let's race well, swap him or whatever. And it's just, it's messed up it's because I'm like, they, they're a good character. You don't need to change their, their, what they've been in the past. Let's, let's leave them as art, create a new character. This comes from a long line of, uh, rumored and suspected, uh, legacy character hate, but the guy who was probably most credited or infamous for that was Dan Didio, whatever you say his name is. Yeah. D- yeah. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Didio. And like, once he went away, I was like, oh, so well, I guess no one's going to hate legacy characters anymore. Cause it seems like anything he had his hand in was really just legacy characters must suffer. Mm-hmm. That's what it seemed like to me, but um, well, and I also think uh, we talked about this one time. I, I don't know if we talked about this on stream, but I know we have talked about this. Is this retribution, or or is this is this retaliation? I mean, against Chuck Dixon for making this such a a great character because the the Tim Drake run in the in the, in the uh, n- and during Nightfall was his. And yeah. Denny O'Neill and him were really good friends. Denny O'Neill is like a, like he's like hard carrying liberal and, but you know, not Chuck. Chuck's like right of Attila the Hun is as he says, yeah. uh, he is uh very right wing. And, uh, but Denny and him got together, got, got along because they said they, they, uh, they both creatively understood the bat universe and loved the characters. And they were like, well, we're, um, we have such respect for them. We, we won't let that get in, in our way. We'll, 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 we'll be able to get along. So they created yeah. some really good stuff, but I just, I, I, I so sometimes wonder what is this retaliation for them making this such a good character and it being so, a, 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 like a, a, a openly conservative man who did it. You know, and I, it's so funny now, you know, um, other, you know, companies and it's kind of just sadly just a comic book thing where, the original creators don't always get the credit they should probably receive. And it's just, you kind of get it because I guess if you work for DC, something you create ultimately belongs to DC, I guess. So, and they don't have to do one thing or the other, I suppose. But, you know, Chuck Dixon, if you're a comic book fan, his name was over everything, especially mm-hmm. Batman. Mm-hmm. Especially he was, night, around Nightfall. It was him. Yeah. And it was, uh, I'm trying to think of who else. It's not, I'm, I'm, Doug Mank is an artist, right? Oh, Bray Fogel, Neil Bray, like all the artists and writers. And they like, there's um, Kelly What's His Face, like all these. Kelly I'm thinking more like artists now. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking more like artists now. But still, a lot of people who made these iconic stories and like one of the main parts of Batman lore now is Batman or getting his back broken by Bane. Try mm-hmm. saying that five times, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like these are like core elements that they are continuing on with they can decide that this didn't happen or just choose to not include that anymore but it's pretty embedded and baked in with batman <clears throat> lore and the bat mythos so and to some people it probably has to irritate them that the originator the guy credited for creating it is this the antithesis of what they want to do mm-hmm. now Mm-hmm. And so you know it's someone that's got to be annoying the crap out of them. That the guy who you who would get credit for this for making you a lot of money, by the way, um, mm-hmm. is so just anti what they want to be. And mm-hmm. so there would have been a time where I said, "Oh, that's silly. The retaliation is silly." But now I'm like, you know what? Everything's fair game. Mm-hmm. Every theory is fair game. <laughs> uh huh. No, I I agree. I agree. And so I it, wouldn't doubt it. I'm it, it, the knife. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh, the other people I was thinking of is Doug Minch or Munch. Yes, and Alan Grant. Oh, I, yeah, during yeah. that time of Nightfall, that was the the core creators, and I think the only one of that really is Chuck, who's openly conservative. But um, hey, um you mentioned Denny O'Neill earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was was he on the team that did um, he was Green there. Arrow and Green Green Lantern? He could have done should've. it in the past. He was a getter in chief for a while of of uh, Marvel's. I'm uh, sorry, of uh, DC, as far as I know. So he, I mean, I could tell you right now what Denny O'Neill has done. Um, well, I'm just wondering I, what what the team was on, like Green Arrow, 
and Green Lantern because remember, you know, uh, Green Arrow was was a bleeding heart liberal, and then uh, yeah, that's true. Green he was Lantern supposed was- to to be the antithesis because that's what Batman is supposed to be. Batman is supposed to be like uh, he's supposed to be at, at first. He was the right wing uh, playboy, and yeah. Green Arrow was the uh, antithesis of him, mm-hmm. as far as I know. But he has worked on uh, he's worked on Bane, Ra's al Ghul, Talia al Ghul, Black Canary, Azrael, uh, Leah, uh, Le- Leslie Thompson, Lady Shiva, Matches Malone, which is that's awesome, uh, Bronze Tiger, Maxi Zeus, Harold Allnut, um, Doctor Dark, uh, Ubu, I don't know who that is, uh, yeah, si- Ubu's uh, uh, Doctor Strange, oh, no, yeah. Ghul's person, not Doctor Strange. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> Cyrus Pinky, Doctor Moon, Solomon Wayne, <laughs> Solomon, Solomon Wayne, nice. <laughs> uh, Moloch, <laughs> Colonel Sulfur, Professor Ojo, and King Cobra. Uh, I don't see in here where he worked on. He didn't work on that. So you, I mean, he may not have had any. Uh, uh, so pay up. up. Pay up, oh, just, you lose. You lose. Uh, well, I know that's. Up. I know that's probably why they got Kevin Smith to work on him eventually. Because I know that for a while, uh, Chuck Dixon took over on Green Arrow, and people uh, loved his run. And yeah. then he he's even said, uh, he's like, yeah, I was doing that. He's like, at first, I didn't want to do it. He said, I, I just, I'll do the book for six months, and but I'm out after that. And then he said yeah. he started having so much fun with the character that he just kept going for like three years on uh, Green now- Arrow. Now and apparently Hawk is asexual. Now Connor Hawk is apparently asexual now because everybody has to be something. What? Yeah, there's this weird. It was kind of ambiguous, but there was this thing at first anyway. And there was this thing during the recent the uh, Damian Wayne uh, Robin series where Connor Hawk, who they, he was always mixed race, but they went hardcore mixed race. I'm like, okay, well, he always was that, but man, they are making sure you know. Anyway, and to the point where you can't really tell what Connor Hawk is. He's like very dark complexion, blonde hair. I'm like, I guess that was always the case, but they, when I grew up reading Connor Hawk, I had no idea. I just thought he was white, but he was like, whatever. But anyway, apparently he came out as like asexual because they figured, I guess they realized, well, him and not asexual yet. That's Connor Hawk now, because he just has to be something. He can't just be Connor Hawk, you know. So, I mean, like, it's so weird. I I am right. It is it is Dennis O'Neill. He did the Green Lantern and Green Arrow uh, comics with oh, uh, Neil Adams. That was the big, you know, the pay up tie. Yeah, so pay I, I up. Gotta pay up. This now. is like the big run where, like, this is the big run where you know, like. Um, speedy's a junkie you know and stuff like that mm-hmm. so that was a, that was kind of a big deal but uh with you saying he was a, a card carrying liberal that that makes sense with that batman story batman line. fandom wiki you you've uh, actually uh, failed me so burn in hell anyways <laughs> <laughs> so connor hawk's asexual well, at least they didn't make uh, oliver queen asexual i mean that would have been weird He's like, honey, um, I know you're smoking hot and blonde and all with the big jugs, but I can't. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't like you or anybody else anymore. <laughs> I don't like anything anymore. I guess I don't like you. Anything. Did it? So why can't we? I just, I, it's gonna be funny whenever they have like a two spirit dragon can or something like that. It's gonna be so dumb. Yeah. Like, but anyway, so the the um the Tim Drake series getting cut at the knees. While he was on his news, anyway, and uh, the co and the cope is so hilarious. Just like they're, it was oh, always meant to be ten issues. I'm like, no, because if it was selling, yeah. it would still be going. If but. it if it was meant to be ten issues, it would say one of ten on the first issue. You know, yeah. Comics meant to last a long time as long as people are paying money to buy them. Like, no, you can have like a first initial story arc in mind, mm-hmm. but that not get out of here. See, this is the thing. This, these are the lies I'm tired of. It's like. Mm-hmm. Make a character race while making gay, do whatever, but don't just buy yeah. when it doesn't work. Yeah, or maybe the story just wasn't good or the art was pathetic. It was just sad. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to move us on to the next topic because we're probably running short of time here. And I want to get to the last two things here. We're going to talk in back issues about Batman Three Jokers. 
Now, this was a comic that I wasn't aware of. Uh, well, I, I was aware of the event when it happened, but I wasn't aware that it was a good story until No H uh, mentioned it. And I w- immediately went out and I read it. And I have to say, uh, between this and The White Knight, I prefer this. Um, yeah. Th- this was a far better comic. Uh, it was done by uh, Jeff Johns, Jason Fabic, and uh, Brad Anderson. I'm yeah, guessing he's an inker or colorist, but. Uh, for, for my money, this was the better of the two events. Uh, I have to say this, this comic did a lot for me as for making me like Jason Todd, uh, yeah. Yeah. is like the main thing that I would say that I got out of this. It's, it's a typical Batman story. We know that the, the Moxon family is, is killed and, uh, Batman is trying to ascertain it, it, they pretty sure they're pretty sure Joker's involved, but there's like three murders at one, um, once. And, and, and like, I'm not saying three people were murdered. I was like three murder scenes, I believe at one at time. At the when same was, time. Yeah. 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 It was like an actor, these three guys from the Moxon family. And I honestly don't remember the other one. Um, uh, the, but they, they're found dead and they, they all had one of them. I think the, the, if it was, I remember right, the actor who played fat man had his tongue cut out. <laughs> These guys were yeah. jokered, jokered. And I can't remember what happened to the other guy, but they, they very quickly, which I thought was weird in this story. They very quickly go, well, it must be that there's three guys doing this. Uh, how mm-hmm. did he do it all at once? Is like, they're like, there must be three jokers. And I would have thought, I would have thought they would have made like maybe a, a different connection where they would have said, uh, <laughs> it was said maybe Joker and his henchmen did, yeah. did this yeah. simultaneous. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have jumped to the conclusion that there must be three Jokers, which that was <laughs> one of the weird plot things that I saw in the, or not plot things, but just a weird leap in, 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 um, uh, and logic, if if they want to just get to the point, they want to really, get to the point. That, that is true because if you, I, the only other Jeff Johns books that I, I've read recently, and I believe it's Jeff Johns who wrote um, Flashpoint, and Flashpoint does not f around; it gets right in there and and going. Well, it's, so it's, it's just Flash, so they're they're going to do things quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I I just like I said, this made me like this made me like Jason Todd more because he goes hard in this book yeah. he mm-hmm. this guy this poor guy is not a bad guy that he's he's smashing up against the inside of this ambulance he is a victim and jason's like uh-uh. no 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 you tell me you tell me where the joker is and batman yes. and, and and barbara have to stop him because he is just he like i said he goes hard he does not yeah. have any time for anybody's bs uh i'm get this is black label so i i, I know it doesn't have continuity to the rest of the uh, DC well, what's interesting, I, I think it may have, may have at one time might have been intended to be, but now, I mean, clearly it's not now, but now it's basically if a, if a writer likes an element of it, it will be introduced into the main canon somehow, but it's, it's, it, but it actually works out better that it's its own thing, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although I will say I'm very open to the Three Jokers um, idea and, and concept after if reading that yeah if it would have been part of the main storyline i'd have been totally i would have been totally okay with it because it doesn't like it it really didn't go to a weird like if you read the white knight the white knight it's like it just was car porn you know and and on top of that it was like oh jack napier has a he's got a fetish for the batman and blah 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 <laughs> and it gives him erectile dysfunction with harley quinn and all this weird stuff and i was like yeah let's not do that and uh, <laughs> this one i was like well it makes sense because we have seen because of different writers we have seen kind of various forms of the joker and in in, in, in this is one of the first scenes where you kind of get introduced to all three the criminal the clown and the uh, the uh, criminal clown, the comedian. No. Actually, right here, I think it's the criminal, the comedian, the clown, if I'm not mistaken. No, criminal, the clown, and the comedian. So the comedian is the one with the hat. I always forget because they changed his outfit quite a bit in this. But uh, you you find out that they they meet they meet often and they talk about like what they're doing and they're basically in the story they're they're just trying to build a better Joker. Is what the if you if you wanted to like wrap this uh, book up in a nutshell, they're just trying to build a better Joker, and I guess <laughs> I'm guessing like these are like good attempts, but still failed attempts. 
yeah. is what I got from it. Um, I don't, I don't want to be the only one talking here. Uh, if you want to jump in, well, go ahead. I think it's, the thing is what I really liked about it is I think what's told me on it is early on, there's a scene where I believe they're in Arkham or something. And, there are these supervillains in their prison cells. And yeah, I think Bla- it was Blackgate, actually, I believe. Yeah, but yeah, Bla- Blackgate, and they're going on. And then when Batman walks it through, they all shut up and they're all oh, like yeah. afraid. I'm like, I'm like, I'm so sold on this. Like, I like, I love like people. And the, and you know, in the Robert Pattinson film, The Batman, there was a bit of that where he appeared at the crime scene and all the cops just sort of get quiet. Like, they don't, they may not even like him, but he's just such an odd presence that. You just can't help but just shut up and just like dare to look at him. And I'm like, man, this is this is what I want from my Batman to like actually be a little terrifying. Mm-hmm. And as much as I love bright blue and gray Batman, sometimes I'm like, you gotta remind, you gotta refresh people's memories. I'm like, yeah, he's terrifying and can beat your ass. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you know, he's infinitely smarter than you. So I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. it made sense. And after I saw that, I'm like, okay, I'm 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 down for this. And there was also, um, I guess, mild spoiler territory. But um, I would have never thought of a relationship between Jason Todd and uh, uh, Barbara. Mm-hmm. I, I That, for some reason, that was... And when I read I'm like, I don't hate it, you know? Well, it seems it's like... Me, uh, has she hooked, hooked up with stuff? everybody? Has she hooked up with yeah. every Robin now? Except for them all? He wasn't interested. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah that's... Oh, yeah, Tim Drake. Yeah, he's like, no, 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 thanks. He's like, like Ice no. Man. He's like Ice Man <laughs> well, in that episode, that that clip I showed. He's all a girl. Yuck. <laughs> gross. gross. One thing I liked I liked about this was his costume, which was heavily based um, on the eighty eighty nine costume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was gonna. Bring, I knew I was waiting. Like he's gonna bring up yeah. the costume. Yeah. And the only thing I didn't in, like was, was that metal ring around the um around the emblem. I didn't care for it, that. But I, I understood yeah, I, it because it, it's a flashlight. Like you it's need. a flashlight. It's the most. It's it's the most obvious thing ever. And I just like how Jason <laughs> Todd's like Jason Todd's like, oh yeah, yeah, you're really yeah, you're we're being stealthy with your freaking chest glowing like that, that. signal. <laughs> well, you yeah, know what yeah. struck me about this book is it's command like Jeff Johns' command of the Batman like mythology. He he like right here. He had the 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 Joker fish. And he yeah. like in, in this gaggy like who gaggy, yes. who remembers yeah, who, gaggy who remembers yeah. gaggy Jeff Johns does and that's cool and, and what made each Joker throughout the like pantheon of uh, of of creators and artists what made each Joker slightly different and he he understood that and he brought it to this book and I was like wow this is I, I'm I'm stupid impressed by this. And, yeah. and it's actually got me like going like, well, what's going on like this? And, and it felt here's the other thing. This is the thing. My pet peeve with most uh, Batman comics. If you don't write them as a detective story, you're dead to me. Yeah. These are first and foremost detective stories. And if you write them too actiony, uh, they don't come off as a Batman story. They just become like a JLA or or a Superman yeah. story. And I don't care for that. There needs to be some mystery. Cause that's why is, if he's not the dark Knight detective, who is he? You know, right? he's got, he's got to have his yeah. thing. Yeah. A, a lot of things miss that when I feel like, and even the Nolan trilogy, I fear like strayed from that a lot. And mm-hmm. it became more, like I don't feel like I'm rooting for Batman. I'm just witnessing a spectacle. It's an entertaining spectacle, but I'm just like, it doesn't feel quote unquote like Batman. And when I, and I'm like, yeah, I like to see him, you know, collecting evidence, looking for clues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's what he does. What, He's like yeah, better yeah. than the cops. I just like how the cops like just they let him in, and he said that they're standing there like basically. What do you think, bats? And like you know, that's it's like an old way of being like it's it's kind of this. We're bringing the the campy thing, the idea that like Commissioner Gordon and and Bullock and wherever would be standing there going like, so what do you think, bats? This is more like mm-hmm. oh, bats, blah blah blah. This is going on, and they they, they value his opinion, and because yeah. uh, they know yeah. they're not going to be able to stop him from doing it, so they just like, well, might as well let him in this universe. But in the in the in the day, it was the camp of it all. Is like 
he's helping yeah. us because he's the caped crusader. And yeah. um, the other thing I liked about this is Jason is is pretty. He's broken. I mean, he's broke, but he's not broken. Like he's. Yeah. This is a revenge arc for him. He's like. He is super pissed about this. He's still mad that Batman basically like left him for dead uh, in, a, in, a, in a grave. And he is upset about it. And it, he just, he, he like, he, ge- he gives up on all the, like, he is like, I'll keep some of the Batman stuff I like, but I'm taking guns with me. Yeah, I don't take, yeah, I don't yeah. take guff from any Joker. Um, I was very shocked. I, I, I have not included spoilers uh, it, visually. Uh, and I, I kind of don't want to tell everybody what happens because I, I truly want people to go out and read this book that when we, when I started this channel, one of the things uh, that, that I wanted for, for all of us was to talk about stories that we liked and stories uh, that are good within the, the, the this horrible time frame that we're in. Um, where yeah. comics, you'll read a comic like, God, this is trash. This is trash. And that's trash. And I know I, I do, I shit on a lot of things and it's because a lot of things piss me off now, but I do want to talk about the stuff that is good. And like, like I said, this is one book that I really, really appreciated. Um, and moving on to like the, the, the like the, the second part of the book, we get to see like kind of that. Oh wow, that is messed up. That is not supposed to be there. Uh, yeah. Is that is that just starting over? Yeah, it's just starting over. Okay, well that's fine. I must have not picked up all my <laughs> Im- images. But anyways, uh, in the second book, we uh, we get more of like a taste of of like who, how crazy uh, the 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 Joker's are, how deluded. I, I think yeah. that they gave a lot away in, in the second uh, part of the uh, the 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 books because. You got like this one, I, I believe, is the comedian, and he, he he like walks in and starts talking with uh these like he has like this dream seek not dream seek is like it's like a, like a, day, a daydream where he basically um talks to his uh wife and child and the the, the wife is the oh. back and the child is the bear remember that and um I think this is also the book where they they found they they found out that uh. He, they're basically going after Joe chill for some reason. And they haven't quite figured it out. Right. And uh, Jason Todd has already done something pretty, pretty horrible. And I, I thought it was a little bit weird that Batman was so like, well, what you going to do? You know? <laughs> yeah. What you going to do? It's Jason. I got to give him a mulligan there, you know? And uh, he, he lets it, he lets him go. And Barbara's like shocked. She's like, what the hell? He, you, you, <laughs> If yeah. I knew you could do this, <laughs> if I know you could do this all the time. I'd already done it. It's so, my uh, turn. It's my turn. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I was, I was a little bit shocked by like Batman being so okay with it, but eventually they find out that like he, they're, they're going after Joe chill for some reason. And, uh, they end up, uh, g- going to visit him. They find out he's actually really sick and that he's yeah. kind of on his deathbed and that he's for years, uh, has been writing letters to Bruce Wayne. Uh, and they're basically like apology letters that he never mailed, but he writes them like yeah. constantly. Yeah. And uh, I think also this is where we find the, um, I guess it's, I guess it would be like spring break at Neverland ranch where <laughs> they, <laughs> Jason Todd actually out detectives uh, Batman. He finds out that they're, uh, there's this kind of, it's, I don't know if it was like a gym, like, it was like a natatorium, like a pool. And the Jokers had been uh, t- basically taking people and just dumping them into this pool <laughs> of, the, of the chemicals uh, that, uh, you know, the Joker, the, I don't know, I don't even know what to call it. I guess that the Jokerizing chemical is what I would call it. Yeah. And uh, Joker toxin. Joker toxin. Yeah. There we go. And he's, he's making uh, like it's pretty much a little army of, of, of uh, Joker. Uh, acolytes and um then uh as, as the, they got they kind of get the jump on jason and they proceed to make kind of like a they kind of just mock him they mock him for they kind of like mock his pain and i think that a lot of this was about mocking everybody for their pain uh yeah the, the, that's that was kind of each joker was like i'm i i, I that I, truly i want to be a part of your life and the, the way that I can do it is by mocking your pain. And so 
nothing by gaslight. I'm good grief. Yeah. And uh, so they go, they go, and then they eventually end up um, at the, the place where it all began, the Monarch Theater. And there is a gigantic uh, fight that ensues. And then we get to have a touching moment uh, between uh, Joe Chill and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Batman, because he actually apparently knows who Bruce, uh, who Bruce Wayne actually is. And then we get another weirdly touching moment between uh, <laughs> Batman and the Joker. And then the story ends and you get to see some really cool stuff. Uh, I, like I said, I don't want to give a lot of spoilers away, but uh, like this in the last few years, this is probably one of the better DC books uh, yeah. series that I've read lately. And it's like, this should like, if you're going to make a movie based on anything, it should be just this, you know, like you love, like you're going to have Joker in the movie somehow. Like, well, this, we get three of them. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Well, clear. it looks like that Joker two movie has multiple jokers from what we've been seeing. Yeah. From behind yeah, the scenes I that, stuff. Yeah. So I wonder if they're taking something from this. I would like that, but I have a feeling that's just like a hallucination. I, I have a feeling it's a stunt double. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're dressed different. That's and, uh, I'm like, I would love it if it's, they're doing like there's multiple or something, but I don't really yeah. have a reason to believe that yet. We shall the, see one, the one thing I remember about this comic book is how long it took to come out. I remember they yes. they were talking about it for years, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I read something. It was like quite a bit of time in the making, like three years in the making. Yeah. Which yeah. may have something to do with his costume, because I, I think... I, I could be wrong, but when we were reading that, uh, John, it's I think you read it. All about the costume bods. All yeah. the, <laughs> well, the the Watchmen, uh, yeah, you know, crossover with with all the stuff going on with and Batman. I think we're something similar, and they're like, well, maybe that's what he's going to wear at this point, you know. Uh, but I don't know. It, it was all just speculation about like. Well, that's one of those things where uh, I was saying earlier, like. It probably was supposed to be in it at one point. And then um, the Doomsday Clock took for it was like a joke how long Doomsday Clock took to come out. Yeah. Clock was probably supposed to be like canon at one point. And then it's like, eh, it's its own thing now because it took forever and a day to come yeah. out. And going back to JSA for a second, as much as I love the JSA and I appreciate the Jeff John stuff with the JSA, but it's like, DC stands for delayed comics. I'm like, we are waiting a <laughs> for these new issues to come out, which I'm honestly reserving judgment until I read the whole story. And I guess I'm going to be here a while for this latest JSA run, but uh, it's just, I'm actually glad that three jokers took a while to come out because uh, I love the art and I'm glad that that wasn't. Yeah. Fabric. Who would have known? Yeah. I always thought it, of Fabic as kind of like a Finch clone. David, uh, David yeah. Finch. Uh, I could see that. Yeah. David Finch uh, is not my favorite artist. He, I, I, there are things that I like that he's done. Like he just, he just did that cover of the Savage Avengers I showed earlier. And mm-hmm. David, um, uh, David does a lot of good static stuff, but his interiors are balls. Every time I look at his, <laughs> his interiors, I'm like, why does everybody have a weird face? It's like he's in a hurry or something. Cause I, yeah. I, I, I am a, a fan. I, I watch his YouTube and to me, he draws a bit slow and, uh, maybe fabrics faster. So that's why they'll have like a Finch cover and a fabric interior a lot of times. Mm. Uh, but Jason is, is great. I, I, I'm now, a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. Uh, I'm, I actually started looking up other books that he's done uh, because of this run, because I just yeah, enjoyed the the artwork. It was, it was not, it's not yeah. my favorite. It's not my favorite by a long shot, but. Yeah. Uh, so do, Jason, if you're listening, it's not our favorite, but we like it. <laughs> we like it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it feels <laughs> like he was doing a lot of the, the Batman run I was reading. And then also uh, Janin or Fanon. Uh, my I don't know how to say the name. I don't know. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, he he, I, he I, was really good. I know. Uh, Tyn, uh, I know. Tynan was writing. Tynan, whatever his name is, was writing Tinian. a lot. Tinian. No, sorry. Uh, was writing a lot of uh, detective. I want to say, and then Fabic was his artist mm. during that run. And um, 
that's where I think I have a few of those old, old books that they were doing. Like whenever the new 52 started to like, well, kind yeah. of wind, wind down. Cause at first it was Tony S. Daniel and I have mixed feelings about Tony S. Daniel. I don't know why his, I think it's a lack of experience at this point, but all, why are all his Batman faces so strangely different from each other? It's like, he has no like consistency. It's like, he's trying to copy uh, Jim Lee, but he's just not very good at, you know, getting a consistent looking face. Yeah. And so I, I just, it's okay. But uh, he's just like a, I think he's just a poor Jim Lee clone at this point. And he needs yeah. to find, find his own, like he needs to find that own sticking place for himself where he can like that grind point where he can do stuff quickly and have it be consistent and look and look good. But I don't think he's there yet, even today. And he's been in there for a while. Yeah, and I will say, like, I, if for me personally, if I could just be like a Jim Lee clone, I can make a career off of that. I would <laughs> love. Yeah, that's any um, day. I will there's be worse. In. There's worse things to be than a Jim Lee clone. But I mean, like yeah. I said, if he could just tighten it up, I think he could be a better Jim Lee clone because a lot of his, a lot of Tony's art to me looks a little bit f- flat too. So, um, but. Anyways, back to this book. I, I like I said, I really want people to go out and read this if you can get a hold of it. Right now, I believe there's a uh, Omni or, or sorry, an Absolute Edition coming out of the Joker, uh, the Three Jokers, and so that's going to have all the cool artwork in the back, the, the all the, I guess interviews and stuff, uh, like scripts and everything. So those are always fun to hat to be had. Um, it's a little pricey. It's it's like fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, if you if you get it at uh, one of these direct marketplaces like cheaper uh, cheap cheap graphic novels dot com or organic price books dot com, but this is a solid read. No H, you really hit the hit the nail on the head with this suggestion. I I really appreciate. it. I'm glad I checked this book out. So uh, mutants, if you want a good book that's not that hasn't been done by uh, what is his name Murphy uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. Mm-hmm. I would say this is the the better of the books. Yeah, and for sure. now to move on to, uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to jump over to it. Uh, let's see, put this up. I'm now I'm I'm gonna put Orville on, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show it. Like I'm I'm just gonna have it up so I can. Oh, whoops, that was loud. Uh, I'm gonna have it up so I can skip to like scenes that we want to skip to. I'm I'm on episode one right now. So let me just jump over to that feed right quick. But anyway, so I think the first the first scene that you have to when you're talking about Orville, you have to talk about the uh, the the oh, where is it? Oh, it's so funny. The blue the blue guy which now as I go back really? and watch this scene, uh yep. Derulio, now as I yep. go yeah. back and watch the scene, I realize that it really was what's his head the whole time. Was it? Yes. It it was Rob Lowe all along. Yeah. It was Rob Lowe all along. Oh, it's not letting me. It's it's not letting me actually. Oh, look, it's got one of those things where it won't let me uh, view this. It's blocking me. Who doesn't like that when you do it? Yeah. Oh, well. Well, Let's see. What 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 are you you on Hulu? Yeah. No, I'm on Disney Plus. It's it's actually blocking me. I was just going to show the statics. I wasn't actually going to show the. uh, uh, actual scene but anyways it was it was rob Lowe, and the, and what got me was that he made that little he, he didn't talk he go or something like that it yeah. is kind of like a little like chirp noise but first of all com- coming to orville since we're not going to be able to show anything uh orville uh, now uh, no h kind of mentioned it in, in passing uh, one day and i thought well uh, i'm looking for a, a good track and he met, had mentioned that Orville, if he wanted to watch something that that like inv- invoked the old Trek, uh, the S- STG, and the, that had more of a a feel of something that was like thought provoking and whatnot, that he would go and watch Orville. So I thought, well, let's go check it out. I don't know. I have no clue about Orville, and I have to say, this show is by far more Trek than Trek at this point. Yep. It's beating it's beating the crap out of. Um, out yeah. of anything out of the uh what's his name um i forget the guy's name now kurtzman and Kurtzman. Gold, 
Chapman or something like that. But yes, which, by the way, if you take a look at the writing credits and the producing credits of the people running in charge of Trek now, you have fan fiction writer, you have someone who is in charge of the failed Mummy reboot, and someone who's responsible for Batman and Robin. These are some of the worst things of all time. Like, oh, on, and that's just. <laughs> And and one person was responsible for John Carter that failed John Carter of Mars movie. Hey, I like John Carter of Mars. <laughs> but these You're are the, one of the only that, people that did. <laughs> they want more well, of you. If, if you really think about it, like they're old books. They're old books. Like, yeah, they're you know, pulps. before that, that was original Superman right there. Like he goes to another planet, is jumping super high because of gravity and stuff like that. I don't know. Bud, anyway, Bud, I, Bud, I, Bud, I, you're not alone. Cool. You're not alone. The, the 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 person I know, my my father in law, he likes uh, John Carter Mars, and I made fun of it in front of him one time. And I, I <laughs> the the books were cool. The books were cool. I yeah, mean, but for was the, the time, movie, and was stuff the like movie that. that cool? I I liked the movie. I was fine with it. I just think it was one well, of those movies that like there was too many things out. Just watching, the time were you just watched. watching it for Deja Thoris. To be honest here, oh, she was yeah, she was hot. She was uh, <laughs> also she was also uh, in. Uh, X Men Origins Wolverine. She was. Uh, oh yeah, was she? Was uh, she Silver did, Fox. Did, Silver, Silver Fox, Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Who? who pl- I, I wonder who played the. Well, I, I was about to say Lady Deathstrike, but that's not correct. Well, the people in charge of the new Star Trek are responsible for some of the biggest pan the things or just biggest failures. I'm like, yeah, that's who I want, and or just a yeah. fan writer. But so yeah, so clearly, if you're looking for an alternative, Orville's the way to go now. Seth MacFarlane in real life, probably kind of annoying to me. I don't know. I don't know. He 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 might be cool. I have no idea. I mm-hmm. met him the one time. No, I didn't. But, <laughs> well, uh, he, I don't oddly, oddly enough, I remember I, I mentioned a, a former um, show where I I told you that my wife's cousin is friends with uh, with Penny uh, the uh, Doctor Finn. Mm-hmm. And yes. she says that Seth MacFarlane throws like really fun parties and stuff like this. Says he, he probably he like five. is pretty cool in real life. If we don't talk about politics, we probably have a great time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, those are the things you're supposed to avoid in those yeah. situations. So yeah, I'm like I've enjoyed so much like American Dad, Family Guy, and all this. So I'm like, yeah, it's is great. I'm just gonna avoid certain. It's sort of like hanging out with Tom Cruise. You'll spend the day with him, but you won't spend you won't stay at his place overnight. You know, anything yeah. that, <laughs> I don't want to know anything about Scientology. Yeah. yeah. And, but Orville, I want to say is like, you would talk about somebody who just understands the assignment so well when yeah. it comes mm-hmm. to E and G. Yeah. So it, he, yeah. he, it, it just, you can tell the, his love for TNG, it, it just, it exudes from the, I mean, it, it like just pours out of this series. You watch it, and if, even from the first episode, just like the, yeah, I mean, it has this funny stuff. Like you, you one time uh, no, he said that it borders on the, it, it, it like knows how to tread the line of between homage and just a a parody, and it, it's yeah. right right in the middle, like on that razor's edge, and where it knows where to be funny and it knows where to be uh like respectful. Yeah, and that I, I think is awesome. And I, I always thought, you know, if No H and I ever made a movie and stuff, that's kind of where we would be. Like, you know, we want to have that have that feel where they're like oh it's serious something bad can happen these characters could die but still have the humor you know and i think like yeah. very few things do that ghostbusters understands that uh yeah. this obviously understands that so it's like i'm watching something that's serious very serious episode but funny things could still happen uh, yeah. and it's just and, and i think a lot of it is just because the characters themselves like like tim like he he will say things uh, and all seriousness you know mean what he's saying but it'll be funny you know and it's just because right. that's a, that's his character you know and there's and there's thought-provoking stories i'm like what you just missing yeah. from new track yeah like the Bachlan well, saga just on down the line yeah well in the in, in the first episode specifically i liked how i like his arc like he's he's kind of uh he's doing well he's focused on his career his girlfriend yeah. cheats on him with Rob Lowe, the blue yeah. alien. Mm-hmm. He uh, moves on to uh, like, then he becomes like a, like a major screw up. Like he, they, they're like, man, you've been came to work drunk so many times. 
Yeah. You you kind of like you're insubordinate. You suck. But we need we have like three thirty thousand ships. So I think is what they said. Or three thousand ships. Yeah. Remember. And they said basically we just need to fill them. And I thought that was so funny. It's like you're not our first choice, but we have so <laughs> right. many that we yeah. you know we have to fill them up. So, and there's, I mean, like just such expert storytelling here because we're just going to gush over the Orville right now. But it's like you have. Uh, like I've never seen a show that really handles it so well to have relationship drama, sci-fi drama, and comedy where it's needed in like all the right places. And stakes. Just, yeah. It's, there it's, are actual stakes on this show. Stakes. Like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's stinks. I was like, okay. No, stakes. Like <laughs> hey, things, can, things can go things can go wrong. Like okay, so in the first episode, they, he goes to uh he gets called off to first he gets sidetracked basically he breaks up with his his wife and then he gets sidetracked and he uh, has to go on a mission just to like a, a uh, like a star base and then he ends up his wife gets put on uh, as his XO and or yeah. his, his number one or whatever I, I i i get i get that kind of confused cuz i i thought the the uh, Bor- uh, bordis was his XO but i'm guessing um. it's uh, Grayson is the first officer and they kind of do a better job of explaining what her duties are more. I mean, you kind of get words on Star Trek, like Riker. So sometimes like, what do you, what do you do here? Exactly? Yeah, what does he do? <laughs> just sit there and, you just sit there and like, like, like kind of like slouch forward and put your arm on your knee. That's about all he ever did. Yeah. He's, like, he's, there to, he's there to be manly, damn it. He's there to be I guess manly. One of the brakes had like a bad back or something. Cause he could not sit. Those chairs. Yeah, he could not sit up. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think he was doing it because he was like, "I'm too tall. I might be, my head might be out. My this gorgeous or, hair might be outside know, of the, the bounds of the it screen." Might have just been, it might have just been him cheating. Like me, if I pro- project myself real big, I can get on camera more. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I always, I always thought this. If you, if you ever watch old Trek, that's how Kirk sat. He never, he oh, always sat yeah, kind of, kind of sideways. And I always did. thought that Riker was supposed to be kind of the, the Kirk character. You know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I I, don't know, I just kind of thought that in my head when I was a kid. I was like, "Oh, he's That's supposed true. to be kind of like the Kirk character." That's so maybe point. that he was just but, maybe getting a little bit of William Shatner there. So um, here's some Orville stuff I, you may or may not know that uh, um, Seth MacFarlane and the uh, girl who plays the lead security officer, Alana, uh, 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 Alora, Alora, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were an item at one time. What they dated in real life, and he even mentioned she like, she's like a twenty-something. Isn't she like really young? Because I remember her from uh, uh, Grown Ups. She was really young in Grown Ups, and she was really young in uh, uh, the uh, Neighbors. Yeah. Well, um, oh, and all- oh, the one with Seth uh, Seth Rogen and all that. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. she's like really young. And uh, the, what's his face who plays Gordon? Malloy was married to uh, Grayson in real life at one point. So, hmm. yeah, yeah. Hmm. That. she since moved on. I don't know about him, though. And the guy who plays Gordon, who is not only the voice of uh, Steve on American Dad, which just makes it funny because every time he'll like there's sometimes he'll, he'll yell and he, and he sounds like Steve from American mm-hmm. Dad. But <laughs> um, anyway, he's actually a good uh, singer. He can, he can, he has like an album out or something. So it's just I, weird. I re- that's that's the redhead guy, right? The pilot, yeah, yeah, the pilot, yeah. He, yeah he's the... he was like, I can't remember what it was, but he was on like uh, he was a kid on a show a long time ago. Oh yeah, oh, that's true. yeah. I can. I, I can don't remember what it was. I can tell you. Yeah, what tell was. me because that's gonna bug me. Uh, let's see. He's on Family Guy, NCIS, Pearl Gates, Justified, uh, Shameless, Criminal Minds. He's so, a little yeah. kid. It's gonna be way down there. Well, it says he was on um. 21 Jump Street. Is that well, it? Yeah, well, my, it feels like it was my, like a My Two Dads. Maybe it's My Two Dads. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it just feels like I, I go. I remember you from being a kid. Yeah, one of the many many redheaded kids that were in shows back in the day. Yeah. But so the okay. Only, only gripe I had with the Oracle, and I don't even know if it's a gripe, is every starship looks the same. Yeah, and I'm so used to Clark Trek. I'm used to Star Trek where it's like, oh, this ship looks different. It was cool to see them all. And i like, would it make more sense for all the ships to look the same? Or would they make different ones? I don't know. I'm torn on that. That's just a minor thing. 
Well, yeah. if you want to know what a Lego version of it would look like, you can go <laughs> to, this is a shout out for my son. You can go to Lego James. I don't guess, it's probably hard to find, actually. I don't know. But <laughs> he has his own page where he went to the Lego Brick Fest over the weekend, and they had a Orville Lego. Uh, oh, like someone awesome. made it. But it, it was awesome. They did a good job. That's awesome. Oh, nice. Well, I want to get into a little bit of the character. So we have we have Scott Grimes. He's the he's the uh, uh, Lieutenant yeah. Commander Gordon Malloy. He's the kind of like the irreverent kind of like drunk but highly skilled guy. <laughs> we have uh, Penny James, who's the doctor who kind of thinks she's needed in on uh, Commander Mercer's ship or Captain Mercer's ship because it's his first command, and she's like, "Oh, you're probably going to screw up, but you know, I'll I'll take care of it." We have Bordis. Yeah who is the single, uh, like single sex species. At least that's what they claim who, uh, is he's just the, the dry humor of the show. He's, he's yeah. Spock meets Spock meets, um, meets Worf. Worf. It, yeah. Worf. And then we have commander, uh, John, uh, Lamar. And, and he yeah, is, I, like he, I, I don't, uh, he's a bad actor, but he's funny. I, I like how, like his first, like, his first, that, that. Business, yeah. his first order of business. His first order of business was like, <laughs> Let's get, can we still have drinks? Can we still have soda? I'm can we still have soda? <laughs> that's that, awesome. That was awesome. Because you know that's that's, sh- that's shit that happens in real life. You know, yeah. like a new a new a new person comes in and they're the new boss, and you, you just, some people are just like, I want things the way they were. Can we? This is what's most important to me. It's as funny as it was. It was like realistic in a way. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? Have, I oh, switched to my car, so I probably saw, yeah, I fine. switched to my car because I, I probably saw okay. but uh, to participate. So I gotta hop off soon. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyways, so, uh, uh, go ahead. But um, I will say that's, that's a good point because John, the the guy who plays a uh, Lamar J. What's his face? I've noticed that he's like the weakest, but he's funny. Yeah, he's funny. To hold his own. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Isaac, who is the, uh, he's basically the, he's the data of the series. And yeah. he's just, he, he's yeah. just a, he's a, he's a alien, basically. He's a, he's an artificial in, uh, life form who is sent to study a uh, human race aboard one of their uh, starships. And uh, lesser characters, we have, uh, well, I guess she's not, you have uh, Alara. She's not a lesser character. She's the, like, she kind of is the Tasha Yar of the series, but she's like a little, kid version of Tasha Yar. She's probably yeah. 20 something at the time. And she's very she's also kind of, kind of the spot character, but with emotion and stuff like, you know, she's the, that kind of alien, you know, Vulcan Romulan looking kind of yeah. alien. And by the way, if you notice some, I think in the first episode, she has no eyebrows. And then after that, she has eyebrows. Cause yeah, that's true. Weird. They did. They gave her eyebrows, but uh, I call, I call a little bit of bullshit on her character because if you uh, th- it's, it's weird. This idea that she's from a planet where they have like a high gravitational pull. And that's why she's so strong in the series. And that's also mm-hmm. why they made her, uh, the, they fast tracked her to make her this head of security. But, um, and that will come into play later in, in, the, in the second episode, but uh, she's super strong. If she lived on a high gravity planet, she would not be shaped like she is. She's be short. She's just, She'd be very, very yes. short. She would be very, very like kind of almost triangular shaped because as gravity gets heavier, you you, you don't end up looking uh, like humanoid. So I'm like, she wouldn't be this cute little cutesy yeah. girl. And no, she'd look very different. Uh, she would then, look closer to uh, e- e- Yafit probably. If yes. <laughs> yeah, and that brings me to Yafit. Yafit is one of my favorite characters. I love Norm Macdonald. God bless him. Yeah. God, God rest him. his soul. Uh, Yafit is is the gelatinous, green gelatinous blob that actually uh, rests on the ship. And I'm glad they had an alien that did not look humanoid at all. I really appreciated that. So in the first episode, you get to meet all this. You get to meet all this cast of characters. There's a lot of funny stuff that happens, uh, which is really great. Uh, and then we move on to the second episode. Actually, in the first episode, I'll, I'll go on to say that they also they go to a planet where there is uh, that you meet the first the bad guys uh, the, the for the krill. The krill. Okay, yeah, the, krill. The, krill, the krill actually looked like they'd be straight at home, straight up at home in Star Trek, and they're this species that just they're they're a uh, basically a devout 
uh, religious, uh, like kind of like, like planet where it, yeah. they believe yeah. that they have dominion over everyone. And so they're going to go out yeah. and kill and take whatever they want. Okay. So they try Praise to get this Peter device. Davis. Yeah. Praise, Praise me to Avis. Avis. All. We, 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 uh, we, uh, worship hurts because I can't remember what he said, but that was so funny. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so they, they're, they worship Avis and they're, they're devout and they, they will kill you because their religion basically tells them that they're better and they deserve everything you have. Like, so, just like, you know, killing animals, you know, they, they don't, they don't see it as like evil. Yeah. They just see it as like they are allowed to. Yeah. And so yeah. they basically in this episode, they go and they try to the 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 acryl, they try to steal this technology from this planet because they see it as a weapon. The crew of the Orville shows up to to basically stop them from doing that. And that's where we move on into the second episode where uh, I honestly don't remember what the catalyst was for this. But uh, Alara gets put in charge and she is uh, I think it's because. Oh, yeah. oh, I think it's because what happened is the two oh. uh, C- commander uh, Mercer Command and Grayson, yeah. they yeah. had to they had to be gone for some reason. I think well, they, they were, were on, on the main mission, the zoo planet. Yeah, they were they they were the oh yeah zoo. they were they in were, the menagerie. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's right. So yeah, so, so that they were on the imaginary. Deeply, deeply feels like a Twilight Zone episode. There, you know that like yeah has that old Star Trek weird Twilight Zone feel to it already. Yeah. And then Bordis is sidetracked, is sidelined because he has he's had he laid an egg, and for twenty one days yeah. he has to help that that he has get, to sit get ready on for it. gestate. Yeah, so why couldn't the why couldn't the other unemployed person do it? I yeah, know, no joke, real. no joke. Because I don't know, God knows why. But um, so, so that puts Alara in the hot seat, and she's like they she says in the first episode, my species is fast tracked because we're so strong. And they want us in these high positions. So she is. She said she's twenty twenty three, right? She's yeah, she twenty three like years old. Years old. She's very young. Yeah. So what happens is in the in the episode is like the the Commander Mercer and Grayson are are basically they they find this this object in space that that's sending out a distress signal. They go in uh, and um, the, which is weird. You'd have the lieutenant commander and the and the captain. Well, go it's that, that's an old. It's very Star, Star Trek. Trek the, very Star Trek of the, them. The, yeah. goes down to handle it themselves <laughs> and so they go in there and they get teleported to this place and it's this species of alien that is so advanced that they're in that they're all bored and they have to like kidnap people to be in these menageries so they have like all these different types of aliens that they basically keep and and, and just look at daily as a zoo basically yeah and yeah. so uh, alara is is alara is like oh my god i don't know what to do because i'm this has never happened before so she's like is continually screwing up because she's not doing her job and 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 basically like relying on herself she goes to penny penny gives her a a, a talk and gets her set straight and uh she goes and talks to bordis which was flipping hilarious and if you haven't seen it i'm not gonna ruin it for you she talks to yeah. bordis and it is awesome uh, this yeah. was a very good episode. I, I, it's not, it's not the, my favorite of the episodes, but it's good. But I want to, before we know each has to get off, I want to talk about the, the, the third episode, which is where I'm, where I'm trying to speed through this. Um, Bordis, Bordis's baby is born in the third episode and Bordis is said in the first episode that it's an all male species, but his baby is born as a female and they were yeah. like the, which is supposed uh, to be very rare. Very rare. Isaac yeah. even says this is there's only one born for every God knows how many uh, babies that they have on Mocklin. And the they immediately go, well, uh, this has happened before. We have to go get the baby a sex change. So they try to get Commander Mercer. Uh, first of all, they go over to Penny, uh, uh, Dr. Claire Finn, and they basically say, hey, you need to perform this. She's like, I'm not going to do this to a baby. That's horrible. Yeah. And so yeah, then yeah. they, she, since she refuses, uh, he, he, uh, Bordis goes over to, uh, Dr. Mercer, uh, sorry, Captain Mercer. And he says, Hey, you need to, uh, command her to do this because this is not done in my species. You have to do this. And he goes, no, that's horrible. I'm not going to do it either. So he eventually calls a Mocklin's, uh, cruiser to meet with the Orville so that they can transfer the baby over to have it, um, to have it uh sex changed and when i was watching this like holy shit i cannot believe 
like it, it's funny because you you have all these these really crappy like woke shows that tackle this yeah. problem as uh, by browbeating you and wagging their finger at you but this one was like it was like hey what do you think this is this guy it's part of it's basically part of his culture and yeah. uh they started they like because they go and they have a trial about this because eventually what happens is is they, they it's funny they show uh uh gordon and um john they're like oh we're gonna go because also alara alara beats up um uh bordis and she's like yeah. see girls are girls are awesome too but the guys to go at it from a different angle because they're like we can't beat bordis so they show him a yeah. movie an, an earth <laughs> movie and that basically changes bordis's mind and it's so funny i'm not gonna ruin what yeah. movie it was but that basically changes bordis's mind so he goes to his his partner clyden and says hey we might have made a mistake by calling that cruiser i don't want to do it but it's too late by then the Mocklins show up, they grab, uh, they basically say, we have to take the baby at this point because this is not done. And so they said, we're at odds here. We call for a tribunal, I think is what uh, board has called it. And so they go to the planet Mocklin and they uh, basically have a trial to see if this baby is going to be sex changed or not. And I was just like, good Lord, this, this show is, it, it's just like, it, it it's not taking it felt like it wasn't taking a side but it was pres, pres, like it was this was the point where they were going to have all the evidence shown and they were like hey you have babies circumcised uh you yeah. have babies done this and that done to babies what how is it any different than what we're doing and i just thought that was so like thought provoking at the time i was like yeah and it is done so much more intelligently than any freaking yeah, blue-haired, right. blue-haired idiot That's the word, could like you could so, be or or against it, but it's done in such an intelligent way where it's ambiguous. It makes you think about, I mean, it, it gets, it makes you think about all the things you're supposed to be uh, uh, thinking about. It's like, it's like how far do we respect other cultures, but what about our own crap we got going on? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's like hitting all the marks, like all the things it's, it's, it's supposed to do. And I'm like, man, lesser shows have tried to do this and failed miserable, m- m- miserably. So uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I watched Orville when it first came out. I watched the first two episodes. Me and me and Brooke watched it. And it's kind of hard because we got to get together and watch it at the same time and stuff. And it's something randomly we, we decided to start watching. And then that, that third episode came on and I was like, oh, here we go. I, I don't know if, you know, if this is going to be entertaining or I'm just going to. And it's I thought the same be, thing. And yeah. I was wrong. Uh, and I and I I'm glad I gave another chance now because we're doing this, you know, uh, for me, for me and 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 Ty just watching it, you know, for the first time. And yeah. I told you all last night, I'm like, I'm 10 episodes in like I don't yeah. I'm not yeah. a binge watching person. I don't binge watch things. I like to savor things. But oh, yeah, this is something I've the, really enjoyed. Yeah. yeah, I watched the shit of this show, man. It is so good. I've never seen anything that is so true to to what it's trying to to mimic in in a, in a respectful way and not a hacky way and be its own thing and just be better than than uh than what is the current iteration of Trek. I I'm Star, yeah. Yeah. I'm modern, struck by it. Modern Star Trek could really learn a thing or two from just watching one episode of the Orville. I'm like, this is kind of what we want. I don't want action track. I don't want, mm-hmm. and a lot of the problems with track, um, there, there was this podcast listened to, uh, that reviews, uh, Star Trek Picard. And they said, you can tell that these current showrunners of track have a love for track, but they kind of get the feeling that they just, don't see beyond the certain element that they like. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you it's like they remembered one episode. They did they forgot about everything else. And then you watch them like, oh, it's cool that that element's returned, but what about everything else since that would directly impact that and how these characters would respond to it? It's like, mm-hmm. nope, here is your fun little voyage home flashback here's your fun little thing with q and it's mm-hmm. like yeah but q brought us the borg and i think a lot of people would be pissed off about that like there should be some type of response to that mm-hmm. so i think but in the hands of the orville writers i'm thinking man they do a really great job especially in, in, in season three when it comes to stuff like that man 
Oh, I'm just be on so this. excited. Yeah, and this is where I have to uh, hop off, but I'll always talk about the Orville because it is great. Well, so, sorry, I got to start late it. today, guys. It's my fault. Uh, we and we did stay on a couple of topics longer than I wanted. That's my yeah. fault as well. But, but I think uh, we covered everything. Yeah, I think we did a pretty good job of this. But uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, No H. Go ahead and sign off. We appreciate you showing up today, and uh, we'll talk to you later, man. Me and Bods will close it out. I think he already left. Are you there, Bods? What? I'm here. I'm just wondering oh, yeah, why yeah, he left. What a jerk. <laughs> that was like unceremonious. <laughs> Didn't even right say now. goodbye. Not no goodbyes, no nothing. Well, no God H's. speed to you, no H. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I would I would highly, highly recommend the show. I'm going to make it uh, a kind of a feature of the show. I, I wanted to go episode by episode, but it, it, now that now that Bod says it, yeah, it's, it, it would have been hard to go episode by episode because we, we, to be honest, we would have had to have more material to actually to actually show and the fact that I can't pause on a video on uh, on uh, Disney Plus to show you like these are the moments like the highlight moments yeah of the show well now we, now now we know it so we can yeah we'll, going we'll forward, fix that we for can, the future I, I'll yeah. make it a, a priority to get that better anyways um yeah and I, this episode in particular I liked just because this is the episode that I when I talk about this show having stakes uh it, it really real consequences. Of, of of actions that the that these people take, like Bordis mm-hmm. making the snap decision to go and have his baby uh sex changed and then changing his mind. Sometimes when you change your mind in life, it's too late. It, it's it, it this almost had like a it smacked of like an abortion thing where it's like he changed his mind while he was in the stirrups at the at the um abortion clinic kind of thing where like he was like yeah. oh it's just too late and he does everything in his power to try and stop what's happening and there's there's some real like like really beautiful moments in this episode where I was like oh my god that's it's like how is a show that it came off to me as, as a comedy and that is to me uh, to be honest that was like the kiss of death for this show's like main stream appeal yeah, it, they they market it too heavily as a, a kind of like a galaxy quest, and that is not at all what this show is. And no. so, and there's nothing wrong with Galaxy Quest. There's nothing the wrong with Galaxy. I love Galaxy Quest. It is an awesome. You show, love Galaxy but Quest. This this is quite a different monster uh, yeah. here. And um, I this episode really really got me. It, what it kind of remind me of, I, like now that Invincible is is a big property now, I can I can talk about this because people will know more about who I'm talking about. Um, in in Invincible, there's kind of the the, the Kirkman is is more of a writer like Seth MacFarlane. Now that I look at them side by side, Kirkman has a character called Monster Girl. Now Monster Girl. Yeah, I remember Monster Girl. Yeah, Monster Girl is a uh she is she's she's just a uh, she looks like a little child she's not. She's like yeah. I think she's in her late 20s or 30s or early 30s if I'm not mistaken. Um yeah. it, her age in the sh- in the show where she's it looks like a child is a consequence of her powers. That bracelet that she wears is actually kind of a curse if I'm not mistaken. I think it was like a curse from like a magical person like a gypsy or something. And um what it does is it gives her the power to turn into monster. They just call it monster. They don't really call it much of anything else uh, in the, in the, in the comics, but she turns into that and it's a male, it's a male monster. Okay. Right. So Mm -hmm. she turns into a male monster. And every time she does that, that, that power has to come from somewhere. So it reduces her age every time she goes into monster mode, basically. And so, Mm -hmm. The, to me, that's like a to me that was like a beautifully written character, uh, and, and an expertly written character because what it what it gives you first it gives you a great power, but it also gives you great consequence, and yeah. for all the the idiots that want to write these like gender bended stupid, uh, like not gender bended all the way. Sometimes it's just Mary Sue's, uh, where they knock out everybody in one punch and they. They have no personality except, oh, I'm a lesbian or, oh, I'm this or whatever, whatever your flavor of genital that you like is. Um, I It can't be written as well as this because Monster Girl uh, loves, she eventually falls in, falls for Robot. And Robot, if you know on the show, there is, uh, what's his name? I um, uh, can't remember his name. The guy that throws 
he he throws the like charged balls of uh, of energy. I can't remember. He's done I can't by remember the, his name either. the guy uh, we like, like his voice. Um, yeah, the voice uh, the voice actor we liked. I can actually look it yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but um, he she falls in. Uh, she she has a crush on the the actual guy. I think it, what was his name? I gotta look it up. It's gonna bother me all day. Oops. Uh, let's see. It's not Steve Newton. That's for sure. Um, it is. Duh, duh, duh. Where are you at? There's Grayson. There's Monster Girl. Adam Eve, Robot, Cecil, Rexplode. Okay, so Rex, Rex Rexplode, is, yeah, yeah. Rex is his real name. That's what everybody calls him. So, uh, Monster Girl has a super crush on Rex. She she thinks he's attractive on the show, or uh, in the comic. And um, a Robot notices that, and he he, he Robot like kind of develops feelings for her. So what he does is he has the uh, Mauler twins go and uh, basically clone him because that's the that's the Mahler twins thing they they're they're clones of each other they're just cloning mm-hmm. cloning cloning and as they clone they become less they become less of their original okay so um uh, uh robot ha- basically captures the Mahler twins and he says you're going to build me a body cuz robot is really just a disgusting little like baby in a tube he's yeah i remember he, yeah he's sickly and dying and so he's like i need you to build me a new body i know that i won't be the one in that body but i want you to clone me with this person's dna and then i have the ability to transfer my mind to that that body and so that's what they do and he does that in an effort to get monster girl to notice him and they eventually get together and they 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 basically fall in love and he uh at, at one point they end up so they're 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 together and they there's like this big uh, battle with it. you may I think they had it in the the first series of Invincible where all those green d- guys with the diddly bobs coming out of their head uh they go to fight like the Omni Man and the Omni Man goes mm-hmm. to their their world he oh, basically yeah. like destroys them okay those are yep. called the Flaxians okay and on their planet the Flaxians live like a normal lifespan but on Earth our timeline is sped up for them so they die very quickly when they get there they eventually figure out a way to get past that. But at one point, Robot and Monster Girl get stuck in the Flaxian dimension. And they're for, there for like, I think they're there for like decades or uh, mm-hmm. maybe, yeah, maybe longer. And during that time, uh, basically Robot just kind of like, he gets so like full of himself. He just kind of forgets about Monster Girl. Well, Monster Girl, the Flaxians are like, well... We kind of we we want we want to get them out of this because they become the rulers like Robot and Monster Girl, and so what they do is they have this Flaxian girl seduce uh, Monster Girl, and Monster Girl changes into Monster and basically sleeps with this girl, and they have a child. And I was like, "Holy crap! That is so flipping crazy of an idea!" And yeah. l- l- like I was like, it takes all the things that like a stupid writer that a blue haired writer would would try to do in their most clumsy, stupid, unoriginal, you know, way. And it turns it into something. I was like, wow, that is just mind blowing that they went from there to there. And so that's kind of how I feel about Orville. It takes things that are clumsily written and it puts them in this package that is is a more palatable by a mile and b uh, just cl- uh, like clever and thought provoking. And so I, well, see, that, not- that was kind of the whole point of old, you know, old star Trek and old twilight zone is like, it was supposed to be thought provoking. They, mm-hmm. they didn't really have like the special effects or maybe even budget to do all these crazy action sequences, but like that, what they could do is make you think they can make, they could write, they could write something to make you, you know, you know, question things. And that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of the whole purpose of some of those older shows. And that's why, that's why Twilight Zone or, or old Star Trek fell a lot like Twilight Zone and even Next Generation, you know, they still had that, those episodes where it was just about like, you know, what if, you know, mm-hmm. and that's, I mean, I know we're not going to talk about other episodes, but except for these three right here, but you and I, we've gone a little bit more ahead, and mm-hmm. there, it, it, it continues. It, they, it can, they, yeah. they do a lot of the what if episodes, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of what why some of these shows that are popular now, like uh, I don't even know if it's still going, but like Black Mirror and stuff like that, where it's like those kind of anthology shows where they're they just show you know like the 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 what if you know I think those that's just something so that we don't see. Yeah, we don't we don't have that anymore. Mm-hmm. And so shows come out like this, and it's, it's just like, yeah, I like to think. 
Mm -hmm. Dude, we're not stupid. We know how multiverses work, and we know yeah, Hollywood. We like we like Star Trek. This thought provoking. So don't don't pigeonhole us, Hollywood. Don't yeah. paint us with that brush. Is what I gotta say. So for everybody who hasn't seen the Orville, go out and watch that because I want a fourth season. I haven't even got past the first season yet, and I definitely know that I want a fourth season. Yeah. And I would say that you will not regret it if you're are, if you are sick of Kurtzman track letting you down. If you're sick of of you know stories that really don't grab the mind, they just basically are, are showboaty or actiony. Go watch Orville. You will greatly appreciate uh, that little suggestion there. Well, that's all I have for you mutants today. Please join us again for the next episode of the Middle-Aged Mutant Show. This is Ty, Bods, and No H signing off.